Hello, good morning and welcome to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. I'm delighted to be joined by Paul Nicholson and Henry Deacon's changed slightly, isn't he? It's Chris Murphy who's back with more puns. I'm sure they've teed you up for many today, Chris. So we're going to start by talking about Dan Closer. I think that's where we should start because you are probably itching to get a few out on him. It doesn't look like it's going to be that close at the top of the table. It looks like he is going to secure that, that first place in finals night. Yeah, coming in on the Wednesday, I was hoping for it to be a little bit closer. There you go, first one, I'm back. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's looking like it's a, a foregone conclusion, though we have said that before, haven't we, in, in recent weeks. So, um, take nothing for granted, but I, I can't see any other outcome. And Nico, Greg Ritchie, his finishing has been a real, real standout point this week so far, hasn't it? It has, and I have to pay him a big tribute on Tuesday as well because he played much better than he did on Monday. The finishing over the course of the two days has been excellent, but what I liked about him yesterday is the fact that his finishing um, wasn't really the big thing. It was that his scoring was improving from day to day. If he can have that same improvement to Wednesday, yes, he might not win Group A, but the fact of the matter is if he's going to continue to improve day on day, Group B beckons for him, that's for sure. And, of course, Ryan Murray was top. We were talking about him after day one. He's the only player so far to have a ton-plus average in this week's action. He's somebody who, how do you think he'd feel coming into today, given that he was top on Monday? We were saying, yeah, we can't really see him relinquishing that lead at the top. We think he'll go on to do it. And then he kind of just dropped off the pace yesterday. I mean, it happens. A classic example is Martin Adams. Very often on these Monday to Wednesday scenarios, he has one bad day but still manages to top the group and get through. Um, so Ryan Murray will be looking to do something like win four out of five, maybe all five today and just right off yesterday. But he's a person who I still think is trying to make a name for himself. Of course, he's kind of infamous for having two nine darts hit against him in the same match by Michael Van Gerwen. And I think he wants to do something himself. So everyone, like, it's not the guy that plays against him is pretty good himself as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is one of the main things you mention, isn't it? When you think of, of Ryan, you do instantly go oh he's that bloke yeah, who, and the nickname who, i love the nickname as well absolutely muzz like you how could you not love that one but also jakesy is a player that we knew quite well coming into this we've seen him in action a number of times but how do you think because of course there is still group b and c to to come on t on thursday and friday how do you think he can go about his business today because he was scoring at times yesterday very very heavily wasn't he he was at times but unfortunately it was too patchy for peter and i suppose when you think about his motivations for wednesday i think it would be really good for peter to come in today with no expectation think that you are going to be in group c and you're going to be here for the next couple of mornings but if you can have that day without pressure and somehow nick that third spot tremendous for your confidence but just try and take the pressure away today and allow the people at the top to try and protect their positions when you don't have to yeah, it is an exciting day ahead. But Murph has just mentioned one of the names that's going to be in action in Thursday and Friday's sessions, Martin Adams. We've also got Robert Thornton. How excited are you to see them back at the Super Series and on this stage for the first time? Yeah, a couple of legends, aren't they? Robert Thornton and Martin Adams actually played in the Seniors World Championship final at the start of the year. Um, so to have two huge names, two greats of the game playing on this stage is, is fantastic. We'll get more viewers, we'll get more interaction on social media, and they're both capable of doing special things. Adams has hit nine darters for fun at the age of, what, 66 now? Makes you sick, doesn't it? Will you still be doing it then? Oh, I don't know if I'll be doing what he does. But He's only five years <laughs> off, isn't he? Well, <laughs> thanks, Abby. But Chris is absolutely right. Robert's in excellent form. He recently made a challenge to our final, so it's not as if we're just saying it's Robert because of his name, it's Robert because he's playing well. And when is Martin not playing well? So adding them to the field this week is just going to make it better. And of course, Robert is in Group B. Who do you think are going to be the two players? If, we, if we're saying that Dan Closer is the player who's going to qualify for finals night, who are the two that you think will finish and go into Group B? I do fancy Greg to make it. I think he'll get there quite comfortably in the next uh, couple of hours. As for the other one, if Ryan Murray's going to have the same kind of day as Tuesday, then his place could be up for grabs. Someone puts in a really good day without any pressure on them. There might be pressure on them in their last game because they might be able to nick that Group B spot. But I'm going to say the Scots are going to make it and uh, we'll see the two Scots in Group B. Murph, would you go along with that? Uh, yeah, I'm going to agree, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I can't. I, I think he's right. Um, yeah, so friends, aren't we here <laughs> at the Super Series? Yeah, Murray and Richie. 
for me. He says they're friends. When they were asked to stand a little bit closer <laughs> to each other, Nico kind of recoiled slightly. But <laughs> anyway, our action gets underway at 9.30 a.m. Not long to wait. Now come and join us on Sporty Stuff TV. The Moda Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill.
Hello, good morning and welcome to the third and final day of Group A action here in week 11 at the Modus Super Series. That of course means that by the close of play today we will know the first player through to finals night on Saturday. To look ahead and reflect on what we've already seen, Paul Nicholson alongside me, Nico a really intriguing day of action yesterday. Daniel Closer winning five out of five. But the highlights video that we're going to show you shortly, he doesn't even feature in that. And I think that's a summary of how he's played. It's been efficient, but no ton topping finish just yet. Yeah, that's really weird. I was looking through the statistics this morning and the amount of consistency that we're getting from Daniel is really, really great. But the jump from the 87 average of Monday to the 90 average of yesterday, it's just, it's just very, very good to admire. And you get the feeling that maybe with very little pressure on him today with that six point buffer at the top of the table, you might see even better from him. But when you look at his finishing for the week, no ton plus finish for the week, that is alarming considering how consistent he's been. It really is and we have seen so many ton plus finishes so far this week. Let's take a look at yesterday's highlights where some of those feature. <laughs> We saw some really good finish in there yesterday. A number of 127 in games as well, which really thrilled you and Henry in the commentary box. But of the players we saw in action yesterday, we're going to see the results from yesterday. Daniel Closer, of course, winning five out of five. Mm. But it was Greg Ritchie for me who upped the score in. His finishing is still up above 40% for the two days, which is quite remarkable. It is world class, you have to say. When you look at the top of the PDC tour, some of the, the best players in the world they're not that far away from having a 40% checker percentage for their season to date. So I think that's something that Greg can really hang on to. But there were some really good games yesterday. I think really close fought matches as well. And I think the quality on whole yesterday was slightly better than Monday. I don't think we had the same individual performances on Tuesday, but some of the matches for me were more intriguing. And Daniel Closer, the one game where he was really, really pushed and tested was against Mark Magini. It was quite impressive to see. We've not really touched upon him much today, but Magini, after that really, really disappointing performance in the previous match, it was good to see him at least putting in that competitive display. Yeah, I think Mark yesterday was just a bit bewildered with some of his performances. Obviously, he didn't get out of the traps very well in his first game, but after that, he was able to find smatterings of, of good stuff. And he's got to remember that and what he was doing during those games and then run with that instead of just thinking that it's naturally going to come to you. You've got to find that one little thing that you can grasp onto to make your performances just a little bit better. Absolutely. We can have a look at the table now and see how things stand going into the final day of action here. It is, of course, Daniel Closer leading the way. And look at that lag difference there for him. That could come into play, of course. But it looks like it is now a battle to, to get into Group B, doesn't it? Very much so. You look at the difference between Rob Collins and Daniel Closer, for instance. There's 10 points between them. And mathematically, usually we wouldn't say that it's... Uh, it's something that can't be, be bridged, but that leg difference is outrageous. I think we could be seeing some sort of record today. If Daniel's going to have the same day as yesterday, where he was plus 14 for the day, if he can do that again, this will be a leg difference record. 
but a really important last game of the day as well. Rob Collins getting that win. That felt like it could be crucial. It could. Uh, I think it all depends on what he does at the very start of today, but uh, it, I suppose it also, also depends on the players as to how much importance they place on being in Group B. I know it's easy for us to say that it's, it's easier to get through that group, but you might prefer to play in the morning. You might prefer to play in the evening. It all depends on personal preference, but... I, I suppose 99 out of 100 players would say I'd rather play in Group B. Yeah, and we've got Greg Ritchie up against Peter Jakes in our first match of the morning. Of course, we've already mentioned Greg's finishing has been superb. We can see him in action here. If he has a good day, do you think there's any chance he could challenge for top spot? Or do you think that's just me clutching to try and make it competitive? I think we are clutching a little bit, but I think most of the players would understand if they were in this sort of position that it's probably done and dusted but it's going to have to be almost a perfect day for Greg, and it's going to have to be a real disaster for Daniel Closer. But having said that, a couple of weeks ago, Conor Heenahan had the other side of the coin game, uh, or the other side of the coin day. He had brilliant one day, and then the next, it didn't go well at all. So let's just hang on a second. But Peter Jakes, he, he kind of caused a few upsets yesterday, didn't he? So he could cause another one here and, and kind of give Daniel Closer that confirmation of top spot early on in the day. If I was to give Peter any sort of advice coming into today, it would be three words, be the spoiler. I know I say that pretty much every Wednesday, but it's so true. My attitude, if I was going on this stage for today in his position, go out there, spoil other people's chances and give yourself some sort of confidence that you didn't know you had. Right then, let's see if he can do just that in our first game of the morning. Let's hand over to Chris Murphy. This man's going to run down to join him. Good morning, thanks, Abby. Yes, Daniel is edging closer here to qualifying for finals night on Saturday. Ryan Murray will take him on in the third game of the day to try and put the brakes on a little bit before that Rob Collins and Mark McGinney. But first, as Paul and Abby were talking about there, Greg Ritchie, the muscle Braman, taking on the Huddersfield Terrier that is Peter Jakes on this final day of Group A action this week at the Moda Super Series. In what has been a, a decent group so far, but the first layer gets quality Greg to throw first. Game on. And kind of status of players is going to improve over the next couple of days with the likes of Martin Adams and Robert 58. Thornton joining the action. Really excited for that double sessions. 96. Tomorrow and Friday. Two big stars of the sport, but right now it does remain about the race two finals. That and indeed, who will be in which group? One hundred. And this man has shown, as Paul was saying at the top of the show, glimpses of what he can do, and would need a a big favour, a collapse, or really anything closer to take that finals night spot with Greg Ritchie. But has to do his own job first, Paul. Yes, he does. And I think this is a very good thing for Greg to be in first. 47. Ahead of Daniel, who starts his campaign for Wednesday in match number three. So he will know fine well where he stands before Daniel's even thrown a competitive dart today. Sometimes you need that little advantage before you go into your second game. Now... The second game of the day for Greg Ritchie is going to be against Ryan Murray, which is intriguing because those two are both battling for a Group B spot if 60. they can't catch Greg Daniel Ricoyan, Closer, so that 91. has a lot of importance to it. But Greg is starting very well this morning. 74 left, and he will lay up the tops. 32. Well, might. Peter, you require 128. 59. Remaining, you will expect to get a go at it, but there's loads of space in there. Well, I can't believe that. He, he knows the behavior of his darts better than me, but it looked Paul, like he'd left 59. an absolute ocean of space. Yeah, I agree. I'm surprised he went that route. Greg is eventually on tops. 39. And a couple of missed darts. Peter that one at double 50. 10. Missed by quite some distance because of the weight of the dart. The line was pretty good. Game shot on the and first. That is the first leg, leg to Jakes Peter against the Jakes. throw in 17. Somewhat unexpected leg loss there for Greg. Yeah, we have seen a, a mix of results in matches between Second this leg pair. Second leg, it's Peter to throw first. 
game. All on. of them the same score line, but one win by four legs to two for this man, and the same for his opponent yesterday. Yeah, the last couple of days, Greg's got 12 points, which is not bad. Nine maximums. But he's already got two in this game, so he's taken himself to double figures. And he's only the second player to have double figures in 180s this week. And the other one... 60. I'm sure it doesn't take Einstein to figure it out. It is Daniel Closer. But like Abby mentioned at the top of the show, Murph, it's all about the finishing for Greg Ritchie. 43.84% coming into this first match is world class. Now we know one thing that the Motor Super 56. Series does is showcase a strength in depth in the world of darts. I mean, you look at Greg Ritchie's Challenge Tour record, for example, and it doesn't leap off the page. 78. Hasn't ever made a quarter final. That's quite surprising when you think about it. And it's a kind of the same for Daniel, isn't it? He's not being a player that you would immediately think of when you talk about Greg stars from Germany, for instance. But there is more and more a huge strength in depth in the, the sort of... I always hesitate to call it amateur because a lot of the players are kind of semi-professional. But the next tier Peter, away you from the Pro Tour... That's the right way to put it. The next tier of players beyond... The PDC Elite. 41. Great Seen a couple of people try the treble 19 route here on the 114, but I think conventional behaviour this time for Greg, who sometimes likes something a bit Game different. Shot on the second but there is that finishing Greg prowess. Ritchie. Once again, gets himself level with the immediate break back. Third leg, it's Greg to throw first. Game That's on. for Peter's first couple of days here this week. His average, just a shade under 84. Eight maximums. 24. But on the flip side of what Greg has been doing, Peter Jake's at 25% in the checkouts. That does need addressing. Now, where do you think these players need to be on the whole to contend? Do you think it's 96. around 36, 37%? Yeah, I would say 33.33 recurring I think it's a third it, at this level I think at the elite level you're now looking at 40% the 100. north of that but I think if you're hitting a third of your double attempts you're going to have a very good chance of winning most matches the interesting thing about you saying that Murph, is that half of the players in this group are above that mark half of them are below it Well, on the mark 180. there. 180. Greg Ritchie. Have you had the, uh, the tartan chat? Is that the old Ritchie tartan on his shirt and his flights? I haven't checked it, but I did 100. talk on Monday about his synchronicity between the flights and the shirt. I thought it was nice branding, but some people might not be aware that 97. different looking tartans are for different clans. I have my own tartan, the Nicholson clan. And I'm very happy to see a minus black and white. 41. Greg, you require sure 100. Should be a Murphy one as well, no doubt. Well, now it will be treble 19. 68. And just had a quick glance there at Peter Jakes' score and decided better of going for the double 19. You, you were just talking about Jake's as frailty on the doubles. I think that's been a long-standing Greg problem for him. 32. When he was on the Pro Tour, a powerful scorer. But not able to mop up with the same efficiency that Greg Ritchie is doing in this game. Don't miss now, Greg. It would have sounded really good had you hit while I was saying that. No score. Cheers, Greg. PT that was a really, really difficult dart. I thought he was going to hit it because he was one out of every three shots hit. Going into that visit, but 76. Peter Jakes with a somewhat 32. desperate last dart at double 19 to lead tops, thinking that he's not coming back. Game shot he was the right. third leg. He is 100% Ritchie. in this game, Peter Jakes, because he's only had one dart at double, but it's not just the doubles in themselves. It's when he gets around that 200-ish mark, 220, on. starts to put in a few poor visits as well. It's almost like he can see the finish 100. line in the leg, and then it just starts to stutter a little bit. 
I'd love to ask you this question. In fact, I've been waiting to ask you this question this week. I've watched Peter for the last six years. I don't remember him using barrels this intricate with this sort of tapered nature. These look a lot thinner than what he used to use. Or is my mind just to see? No, I'd, I'd agree with that. I, I think he used to use quite... The barrel was the same 96. width all the way down, if you like. Same circumference. Yeah, maybe trying to get more out of his scoring game and in doing so has maybe taken something away from 60. another part. The way to explain that really is Peter Wright. At times he said that darts like the ones that Peter's using today. 95. He can score better because they can be so close together with that tapered nature towards the end. But that does have an effect on when you're doubling. I still, I still don't think we're far away from a player, probably Greg Peter Wright, taking two sets of darts on stage and throwing different one at doubles than he does at trebles. Hello. Goodbye. 98. Peter, you require 96. Game shot on the fourth leg. Peter Jakes. That was about as clean as it comes, isn't it? 96 out, just like that. And he has not missed a Fifth double leg, it's Greg to in throw this first. match. Game on. But he hasn't hit a 180 yet. But what has gone before doesn't really matter now. It's all about best of three from here at two legs all. 92. Yeah, it's a good, solid standard from the pair of them, really. And, you know, we're talking about the the scoring of Jake's 56. and the, the doubling of Richie. Well, they've kind of flip reversed it for this opener, haven't they? Check you out using the frizz flip reverse. I mean, could you listen to any more garage 135. music? 135. One of the things that made me giggle yesterday was the shirt of Peter Jake's. He gets really annoyed 95. when people say his name wrong. So his nickname is actually phonetically saying Jakesy. <laughs> Just a way of getting it right. Richie's getting things right in this department. And it's now a couple of ton 40s to go with the three maximums he's hit in the match. He's averaging 93.66 currently, Greg which if he can maintain that, it would be his best average of the week. His best so far is 91.4, which, strangely, was a losing average. He can't make his mind up here. It's the old Bucks fish shot. 58. Will he be popping the champagne at the end of the day? That probably went straight over his head. He's only 27. He was born in 1995. 100. Greg requires 76. I got it, Paul. That's all that matters. You know everything about music in that era. Your nickname would be Shazam. Double top. Game shot on the fifth And play. more finishing Greg prowess Ritchie. there from Greg. Brings himself back to one in every three. Just really Sick good leg. It's at the to end throw of first. legs. Game on. He's been showing it all week long. Causing problems. For the likes of Jakes and 100. with a win in this match, he would get himself within four points of closer. And things may change if Ryan Murray could do him a favor in match three. But still, Richie 57. needs to win this match. And we can't ignore Murph that leg difference. There's a difference of 18 between Richie and closer. That's effectively 125. another four points, isn't it? Yeah. Huge, enormous, and I think you were right at the top of the show when you were talking to Abby and saying that we, we could be on for a record. We'll have to uh, scour through the, the stats 84. for the Super Series. Now, people might think that's easy because it's only been around for, what, three years almost, but uh been an awful lot of matches played. We'll get back to you on that one. In fact, Abby, you're not doing anything in between games. We'll let her work it out. I think we might be going the distance in this game. 99. Peter, you require Fair 136. Peter, who's got himself on this 136 after three visits. Should go south now. Single 19 this time. 96. And perfectly approached to leave tops after 12. Well, 
Hasn't missed a double yet. Peter Jakes in this match. 43. Peter, you require 40. Now he's got three clear and all the time in the world. And I think we put that one down as a wide. Game and shot that's in the, the back of the play. net. Peter Jakes. That was a good three dot checkout, that wasn't it? It's almost like he wanted to go 1 7 double 16. Doesn't make any difference Seven and final whether you take it's a first start or third or even second. Game on. As long as you get it. It didn't knock him out of his stride, did it? It kept the same rhythm with all three darts. Just put it down to a mistake. Everybody makes 58. them. If Greg loses this leg and Daniel wins his first game against Ryan Murray, that's pretty much it. Daniel Closer might have to fall off the stage to lose Group A. Yeah, I think it would 95. be, wouldn't it? would It'd be, well, yeah, it'd be an absolute mathematical miracle required that would be probably four nils in the right direction for the rest of the matches. Correct. But we have had a nine-dart shootout since we've come to Portsmouth, and we never had one of those all the way through our time in Southampton, so... Funny how things have happened on this hockey. Yeah, we've been close to having more as well. It's not possible to get one in Group A. One hundred and eighty. Players could be tied on on points and leg difference, but the results against each other would favour one player as they would have played three times. Best leg of scoring in this match 93. in leg seven Peter, you from Jakes. Forty-one. You mentioned Murph that his scoring has been excellent in his career on the Pro Tour. Game that was shot. his best the leg of Peter the entire Jay. week to deny Greg Ritchie a valuable two points in his quest for the top spot. It may be too much for him to do now, but look at Jakes. His previous best performance this week was 89.18. That's bettered it by six and a half points. And 80% on the checkouts was a brilliant display. Well done, Peter. If the pressure's off you today, we'll expect to see more of that as you get yourself to eight points and off the foot of the table for now. When we come back after this short break, it's going to be Collins against McGee.
Hello and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here in Portsmouth where we've just seen Peter Jakes come through a last leg decider 4-3 to get the better of Greg Ritchie. Jakesy's finishing has been his Achilles heel really this week. It was the best part of his game in that opening match though his scoring deserted him early on in the match but in the last leg decider he put all components together to come through and get two points on the board. As Nico said he could end up being the spoiler in Group A today and so far that is proving to be the case putting a dent in Greg Ritchie's hopes of finishing top of Group A of of course. Next up, we've got Rob Collins against Mark McGinney. We've seen both produce some really good stuff, and of course, Mark McGinney not at his best yesterday. He'll be looking for more consistency this morning, having just shown glimpses of what he's capable of yesterday. There we can see him taking out double 10 to get the better in this match yesterday but it wasn't the finest performance of the day I think it's fair to say as for Rob Collins of course getting that victory in the last match of the day yesterday was a real highlight for him of course he's a man who shows a lot of emotion up on that hockey and there he is pinning double 11 in that match there getting a leg on the board. So let's find out then who's going to come out on top in this one in the company of Nico and Murph. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, the first result plays into the hands of the seemingly inevitable conclusion to this group. That Daniel Closer is going to close it out and finish top of the table, have a couple of days off and come back on Saturday. But Rob Collins... And Mark McGean is still very much in the mix to try and make it through to the evening sessions on Thursday and Friday and get into Group B. And you saw there McGean almost apologetic with that, that victory at the end of yesterday. The gladiator, a former finalist at the lakeside against a, a Super Series regular in Rob Collins. Both very capable of players, but based on well the stats that I've been looking at this morning, we haven't seen either of them at the peak of their powers so far? No, I think that's very fair to assume because I think these guys are, are looking for something this first year. First leg, it's Rob to throw first. Game on. I've said on a couple of occasions already this week that Rob Collins is not playing as well this year as last year and his record of making final days in Super Series darts proves 119. that. He was always in Saturday nights in 2021, but this year it just hasn't happened. But for McGinney, I think he's just trying to find something that clicks. I had a little chat with him yesterday. And he said he was a bit mystified as to what was going on because he had a couple of performances that were a bit out of the ordinary. But sometimes when 100. you're a bit lost with your game, or if you're trying to find something that works, you just have to keep practicing purposefully. And what I mean by that is, just try and feel what's going on. 26. If you're just throwing at the board and expecting something to happen, it probably never will. But if you can figure out something that isn't quite right and can figure out how to put it right, if you can work on that one thing, maybe that could be the thing that could click you into gear. Well, crunching the numbers... That one thing for him is the one thing that Peter Jakes needed to put right and seemed to put right in that first match. Robbie Four out of five on the doubles, Jakes. McGinney, one of those players below that 33% mark we were talking about. Oh, this will be an absolutely excellent start for Game Collins. And it is a fabulous 1-4-2 checkout. And there we get the signature celebration from Rob Collins. And that Second was a stylish way of doing first. it as well, Paul, Game incorporating on. the bullseye. Yeah, you're not kidding. That's probably the best finish of the week. Having said that, we have had a 160 from Peter Jakes and a 155 yesterday from Mark McGinney, but 142's done that way. Just a particularly eye-catching thing to see. But I suppose when you try and categorize Rob Collins, he's a very 99. aggressive looking player. And when he's going to the board and taking the, the darts out the board that way, like he did after leg one. He looks a bit like a US, UFC fighter going into the octagon. 59. 
Uh, shackles off seemingly for Collins in this opening match of the morning for this pair. 85. Do you think the players, and I, I'm asking you this question because I haven't actually played in this format in Southampton or Portsmouth. Do you think these players feel pressure to make the top three as opposed to being put into Group 96. C for the next couple of mornings? Do you think they put pressure on themselves to try and make it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know about pressure as such, but I do think that it is certainly preferable and the players know that there's a much, B36. much better chance. If you go into Group B, it's as simple as this. You've got more chance of making it to finals night than not making it to finals night because th more than half the field goes through. Just a third of the field in in Group C. So uh, I think it is such a carrot if you can't make it to that top spot to try and be second or third in this group. And we've seen just how difficult it is to get through Group C. Two spots available from six players 30. over the Mark your Thursday replies, and Friday 72. mornings. It's very, very difficult from the evidence that we've had over the last 18 months. That's a great first start from Mark. Double six. Down to the bottom of the board. Game shot on the second leg. There's a really Mama good check out for Mark. His first leg win of the day. And that could have easily left him on three Third which would have put him in a totally first. different Game psychological on. space for his first leg win of the day. I think that was really, really good from Mark. Yeah. Unleashed a little bit of class 100. there. The dart double six wasn't badly thrown at all, and he didn't show any, any nerves. He wasn't scared of that double three. Had one dart at it, attacked it, and in it went. 135. Next match is the one which could see closer. 60. I'm not going to keep doing it. Move nearer. Edge closer. So far this week, it's been McGinney 60. having the wood over Rob Collins. He's got the two wins on Monday and Tuesday. So he's already wrapped up the head-to-head -head record in Group A. But if they're both confined to Group C, they will play 60. a minimum of five times in the morning sessions. It's one of those interesting spots where players have to be aware of the numbers, 306, in order to give themselves the best chance of leaving a finish. I did see some interesting debate about some that kind of thing, 305, 306, whether that is overthought by players and, and whether you should go down the old Phil Taylor it'll just keep throwing at the treble 20 until you get near a finish because you're less likely to to leave it anyway can I ask who said that do you know do you know who it was I think I think it was the 36. world champion of 1983 if that gives you any clues okay right so let us quash that quite quickly 85 what would Michael Van Gerwen do? That's a great question to answer any problem. Exactly. <laughs> You've got 441 left after scoring 60 with your first visit. What does Michael Van Gerwen do sometimes? He tries 100. to hit a 171 on 19s because he wants to leave 270. It's about leg positioning. And 306, you have to go 19s first. Well, he had to go 19s first for that shot as well. It gave Mark him a dart at the ball. 112. Now Magini does have choices. That's not the best start for him. But he's managed to find a way in. Double 16. 80. Robbie Say requires what, 25. So good. Double 12. Whoops. He's allowed to throw that one. No forward motion. Won't go there 13. again. 13. Mark to require 32. Dan Lauby. The infamous moment when he threw a dart unintentionally. Game shot on the third leg. Mark that McGinney. was certainly intentional from McGinney, who does edge ahead again and edges closer to, to maintaining that perfect record against Rob Collins this week. Full play gets Mark to throw first. Game on. I think McGinney's looking pretty good this morning. He's averaging 87.42 for the first three legs, which is a very decent competitive standard. In this group. Now, if you look at the first 100. couple of days, 
the overall average tells you the most incredible story. Now, everybody sit down, get yourself a nice cup of tea. 100. And over the next 10 seconds, I will tell you a fabulous tale. The average for Monday was 85.05. The average for yesterday was 85.09. So overall, 85.07, right in the middle of the two. Talk about consistent. It doesn't get any more consistent than that. There we go. Jack and Ori's got now on Nico. 100. One thing I will say in direct contradiction to that is that the doubling on Monday at 37.5% was fabulous. But yesterday, overall, it was just under 29%. So we did have a lot more missed doubles. Sixty. Difficult to try and find his range there. The first that was very high. Couldn't make the right adjustment, and then an, an over adjustment really with the third. Yeah, Mark's um, action is a lot more mechanical. Yeah, it has this stopping point right there. Stop back through. Fifty. Whereas Collins, everything's always in motion, so there is more likelihood because of the range of movement that he will get a flyer. 58. Yeah, we'd like to um, see the heat map for this pair because I think you'd see much tighter bunched darts for Magini. Um, for these 60. sort of more flowing players, like Rob Collins, field players, if you like, there's much more variance, isn't there? But it's kind of all or nothing. Yeah, not to mention the fact 100. that he doesn't have a full extension of the throwing arm, it, it almost stops about 10% short of the arm going to hyperextension, whereas Magini, he's very much stop and place the dart through the air. 100. He doesn't throw it, he actually pushes it quite delicately. Double 16 for parity, and to effectively assume control of the contest, but it's another drop dart. We'll get Paul Nicholson's opinion on that because a couple of times 51. on finishers in the last couple of legs, Mark, you require Collins 80. has let one slip and it's just knocked him out of his stride. Perfect. Double 10. Game shot on the fourth leg. Now, this performance Mom is not McGinney. giving him that little jolt of confidence that he really wants. I don't know what will. This is a really steady display. And when he's getting fifth to the leg, double, he's the taking first. care of it. Game on. Thoughts on those drop darts? Coincidence or something more? I think maybe coincidence. I haven't seen him do it a great deal this week. But I'll tell you what, if I was doing what Gerwin Price is doing right now, I'd continue to drop the darts a lot more. <laughs> True. In fine form once again at the World Grand Prix last night. My pick to take that particular title. 26. Is he yours? I wrote a couple of articles and did a couple of podcasts about the World Grand Prix, and I was somewhat looking for outsiders, but in my heart of hearts, 84. I was thinking Price is going to take some beating. On top of that, how good was that Cullen Hetter game last night? That was outrageous. Yeah, superb. Same average for the whole match. 13. Bizarrely, that the worst match has probably been Van Gogh against Anderson. Who would have thought that a few years ago? Yeah, absolutely. The game between Gilding and Ross Smith last night was pretty decent. That was a bit 96. of a roller coaster, but I don't ever remember seeing a match at the World Grand Prix where both players had the same average. Mm. Over 91 is an excellent standard in double start. And they had the same double statistics as well, I believe, 100. in starting uh, in each leg. Yeah, remarkable. Keep running into each other as well in big TV tournaments. Here, Rob Collins trying to 97. get Magini in a battle. That sounded like a Cristiano Aguilera song, didn't it? <laughs> I've missed you, mate. You know that. <laughs> I really have. 100. That's a good tone there from Mark. But he's going to have to utilise the 18s, potentially, when he comes back. With Collins a good dart ahead and now more. He's going to have to be 86. quite creative to leave something gettable here. Well, it's McGinney's turn to drop one on the floor, but he did it on approach rather than at the hockey. Now he does need to move. 
and does. I meant move where he threw the dart, not where he stood. Will be required 114. That 114 options on it. Still options on it, but it's conventional. 74. Not quite clinical. Seems a long time since he popped that 142 to take the first leg. It really does. 140. The scoring has slowed Robbie down a little bit here. 40. The averages are very, very similar. Collins doesn't want to miss this. Game shot on the and doesn't. Play. Rob Collins. So the option for him to get two points to start his day and to get to 10 alongside Sick Ryan though, Murray. Smart to throw first. He's still alive, Game but on. he'll need to win the last two legs of the contest. McGinney on six, currently at the bottom of the table. If he was to find one more leg, he would get to eight points with Jakes and Collins. 60. Well, we did say, like Jakes, a bit that he would have to sort out was his doubling, and he's done that in this match, Mark McGinney. Rob Collins, quite the opposite. 180. First 180 of the match. Is McGinney joining him? Should be a 140. 100. Quite unfortunate that he didn't get it. From the 180 perspective, so far this week, McGinney has got four, which is the least of any 80. player. Collins has now got six, which is in fifth position of the six players. So we're seeing... Less likelihood of 180s coming from these guys than any other, but there is another one. Perfect timing, Mark. Thanks for your help. All about timing, isn't it? And it's a a really well-timed maximum for McGinney because it looked like the Man of Steel Locked might be about to steal the leg and maybe even the match. But now McGinney has half a dozen darts from 161. I could think about the bull. 99. Yeah, the 25 does leave the single to double combination, whereas going for the treble and missing it leaves the treble to double combo. Mark, and that's a lot 62. more difficult now that Rob has left 46. More margins can matter. Well, 18 off, 44 remaining. Acapulco. Game Mark shot. McGinney going loco for tops to win the match and the gladiator gets it done once again against Rob Collins. A 4-2 success for McGinney there. That 180 they hit back in the final leg, pretty crucial. A brilliant 1-4-2 start for Rob Collins, but that was as good as it got. Double trouble for him and Mark McGinney clinical in that department. Coming up after the break, we will see the runaway league leader move closer to securing his spot at finals night if he can beat Ryan Murray. It's Daniel Closer against Muzz Lightyear in a few moments' time.
Hello and welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth where we've just seen Mark Magini record a 4-2 victory in his opening game of the day over Rob Collins. As you can see, both players averaging just shy of 85 in that one, 1-180 one, one apiece. But Mark Magini over 66% checkout percent in that one. Rob Collins picking up where he left off yesterday in the first leg of the day a superb 142 outshot but from there Magini upped his level the overall standard was superior to what he produced yesterday but there were moments where he took his foot off the gas just showing that he's not quite firing on all cylinders just yet but a crucial two points for him and it should prove to be a good confidence boost for him for the remainder of the final day in group a so next then we've got dan closer against ryan murray we're going to take a little look at both of them in action from yesterday here's ryan murray up first of course this match yesterday was a top of the table clash, wasn't it? Ryan Murray, though, unable to maintain the consistency and reach the heights of Monday in that session yesterday. But here's Daniel Closer, who achieved perfection yesterday, winning five out of five of his matches. And a reminder, of course, that he, he is on debut this week. He's won nine of his 10 matches in the Super Series so far. Mr. Efficiency, as we like to call him here. Let's hand over to the commentary team to see if he can continue this superb run. Can Closer close it out? We're about to find out as Daniel on debut here at the Super Series faces Muz Lightyear, Ryan Murray, but it looks like it's his opponent who's going from are going to infinity and beyond Dan the Man, an imaginative nickname. We'll have to uh, sort that out as he progresses through the ranks of this sport. Uh, Ryan Murray from Scotland, as we mentioned, for those of you who are watching our exclusive YouTube chat around 9.20 a.m., best known for having two nine darters hit against him in the same match by Michael Van Gogh, but has had some career highlights of his own and despite the brilliant run that his opponents on more than capable of stopping first leg it's Daniel charge. to throw first game on and maybe delaying the inevitable day number three third different shirt i wonder how many colors he's got these days, top players are worse than football teams for kits. It's been red, it's been white, it's orange today. 137. Imagine if you're a fan of certain dark players, it would cost you a lot of money just to keep up with the kits. But he has been really good the last couple of days, has Daniel. I haven't lied, and I didn't say that I knew a great deal about him coming into this. 140. I'll tell you one thing. I know a lot more about him now. His average on Monday was just a shade over 86. Yesterday, a shade over 90. Great improvement. 140. Decent doubling all week long at 37% exactly, but strangely, no Tum Plus checkouts in 10 matches. Just plain weird. Yeah. 100. Maybe a sign that he hasn't needed them. In a lot of the matches, his approach play has been excellent. So he hasn't needed those Tum Plus checkouts. 41. But surely you require he would hit one at some point. I mean, if he goes through the whole week without one, that'll be just very peculiar. Well, he, he's not going to hit one now. First dart put paid today. 81. But he leaves himself handy. It's a very Daniel Closer kind of leg. Ninety-six. Daniel, you require forty. He's definitely back in the mood. On a double after twelve darts. Game shot. And he's on it again. Leg. Daniel, closer. I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind that if he wins this game, he's going to be safe. Yeah, Second leg is Ryan to throw first, which game might on. just affect the performance level a little bit. But so far, it's affecting it in a positive way. It seems. 13 26. dart start. 
I mentioned the evolution of nickname. Dan the man, I'm not having that, Paul. But do you know the evolution of the the Murray nicknames to get to Muz Lightyear? One hundred and eighty. Well, wasn't his affectionate nickname Muzza? So he had that. He's also been called Top Gun, and also the Michelin Man. One hundred and forty. Before eventually settling on this, which I think is a wise decision, a really good brand. The Michelin Man. What has he got? Three stars <laughs> in a restaurant. Well, that call. explains the stars on his shirt, anyway. Yeah, I quite like this, actually. It's a good identity. 140. Hey, yeah, he went to, was it the Players' Championship Finals? And he, he actually played against Woody, didn't he? Most like, yeah. Luke Woodhouse. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure me and you were commentating on it. 125. It sounds like Arcane again when they were behind closed doors in Coventry. Racking my brains here. I'm, I'm going to try and confirm this on my information device, but I'm sure it happened. He did, because he beat Daniel Stephen Bunting 152. in the previous round. Another chance of a Tom Plus checkout for Daniel, which is not going to be taken. This time it's Murray well positioned after 12. 55. Looking at 15 tops. Good guide. 25. Oh, he's gone Daniel, you're into the next door neighbour's yard. Got caught walking on the grass there. Did Ryan Murray. Game but the shot green the segment this time is kind Daniel for closer. Up. This is sneaky good. I almost don't want to tell you what the average is because... So far this week, third leg, it's Daniel to throw first. When we consider Game how on. consistent Daniel Closer has been, you think at some point he's going to have a really big performance. Well, once or twice this week he has come out of the blocks like this. As you can see with the 111 start, which has just got a little bit better. But his best average so far this week is 93.94. 177. Well, that's a great response from Ryan. Oh, look at this. Stats amazing from this pair at the Super Series. Now, I have it on good authority, and 100. it's being checked as we speak, that the leg difference record for Group A could well be plus 30. Today, we're starting with 94. Daniel Closer on plus 22 with those 18 points. Only the one defeat this week. Yeah, and that came in his second match, didn't it? So he's won his last eight before this one, on course to make it nine on the spin. 95. One thing we can say as well is that Jim McEwen's record of 16 consecutive victories in Super Series darts is looking pretty safe this week. But... 60. What if Daniel was to win all games today and then all games on Saturday? All games on Saturday and then turn up at Champions Week and try and extend that winning run. Exactly. 100. Ryan, you require yeah, I know the gym's going to be watching today. He loves watching when he's practicing. Well, will he be watching Murray tuck into the big fish? 84. They got the batter Daniel, off. Daniel, you require 87. My well, referee likes a big fish. He was eating sea bass last night. Perfectly cooked, by the way. Three Michelin stars there for Charlie. Game and shot three legs for Daniel Closer. Daniel Closer. This is getting really interesting. Best average of the week we've had from any player is 101.9 Full flag. It's from Ryan, Ryan Murray. First. Game on. Yeah, it's... Uh... Just short of 110 at the moment for Daniel Close. So Murray himself, he's averaging in three figures as well. 180. He's not going to have his best average of the week and lose, right? That would be just cruel. But what are we finding when it comes to German dark players? 
we found Veenig, we found Closer, we found so many over the last three or four years. Germany is becoming this incredible nation that churns out players. And the prospect of the perfect leg was there for Mariu. And you just saw actually is now averaging more than the opponent that's beating him 3 0. What would Chris Mason say? They don't put averages on trophies. Unless you've won a trophy that's for the highest average. 140. Does that exist? Oh, yeah. I've got some trophies at home from Australia, which my good friend Tony Birtwistle brought back in a recent trip to England. And one of them was for highest pay. 138. Which was 150 in the MSDA League. In Australia, but this is for an 11 daughter. Game shot. Well, that's the highest play. tag on the dartboard. Ryan Murray. And Ryan Murray does complete an 11 dart leg to keep himself in contention. Fifth leg. It's Daniel to throw first. Game on. Maybe flickering. I don't mean to keep flashing these ones up, but come on. We haven't had a game like this all week. You take this standard all day long. Oh, absolutely. Not much 99. between them in that department, but it's three out of three on checkouts for Closer that's done the damage and still without a three-figure finish. 60. Keeps doing that. He's going to get a nickname. But I ha had it on good authority that plus 30 was the like difference record. That is now confirmed. Chris Gilliland holds that plus 30 record in Group A. And if Closer was to... Get a 4 1 victory here, his leg difference would go to plus 25. Yeah, it's, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that he could absolutely smash that leg at the end of the day. Well, if he mimics what he did yesterday, because he was plus 14 for the day, I mean, he could go to plus 36. One hundred and eight. Well, can he close out this match in sensational style? A man who hasn't had a single three-figure out shot all week, despite his darting dominance in 80. this group, is looking can at one six four after hitting a maximum. He's second of the match. Yes or no? I'm going to go no. I'm going to go yes. Oh, <laughs> he's done you like a kipper. 132. I'm now going to call the 164 the kipper for the rest of time. I'm going to call him the kipper. Oh, keep talking about fish. 140. Might as well have Daniel, you require fish related 32. finishes. But this is for an enormous average. Game shots. Absolutely and brilliant. Daniel Closer. 111.48. A 4 1 thumping of Ryan Murray, who himself averaged. 104.66, but only managed to get one leg against this immovable object at the top of the Group A table that is Germany's Daniel Closer. He sticks in his best performance of the week in his first match of the day. Didn't miss a dart at double, and he is as good as through to finals night. It's clinical closer once again. Coming next, Peter Jakes and Rob Collins carry on the race for Group A be because that champions that finals night spot rather is going to Daniel Closer.
Hello and welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we have just seen the highest quality contest of the week by some distance. Dan Closer beating Ryan Murray by four legs to one. And interestingly, in the three games that these two players have played so far, Ryan Murray has taken just two legs from the German. Look at those averages, both in excess of a ton. Daniel Closer, well over 111 in that one. Four out of four on the outer ring. We've spoken about Closer's efficiency all week, but that word doesn't do justice. The performance he has just put in there, it really does feel like we're unearthing a sublime German talent once more. We can see what that does to the table. And of course, as Nico said, said in commentary plus 30 is currently the highest leg difference in group a and as murph said daniel closer could well go on and smash that as things stand he's on 20 points now with four more games in group a remaining for him up next we've got jakesy against rob collins jakesy looking to record back-to-back -back victories this week for the first time as for rob collins of course taking out the biggest finish of the day with that 142 in his opening match but he'll be looking to move into double figures in the table and move on to 10 points with a win in this next match so let's see then who comes out on top in this one in the company of Murph and Nico thanks Abby welcome back to round two of our matches for Wednesday then and I suppose we have to say that with the exception of a miracle Daniel Closer is very 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 close to being part of Saturday night but I don't think anybody's going to deny him especially when we've just had the second highest average in this venue. The venue record being 115.62 from Conor Heenahan. Now Daniel Closer first with 111.48 with 100% on Game the doubles. On. The second best statistical performance since we moved to Portsmouth. How impressed were you with that one, Murph? Very, very impressed. Obviously, it's the first real... 140. Up close look that I've had at Daniel. I have been keeping an eye on the action this week, but that is a, a real statement performance. And I think as well, you know, it's, it's going to be one to watch. If you want to be here on Saturday night and see someone who could be rather special, get yourself to dartshop.tv, book a ticket. 97. You do pay a fiver, but that's redeemable for a nice little refreshment at the bar on arrival. So the tickets are free. And you might be able 96. to one day say I was there when Daniel Closer emerged. I remember going to the comedy store in London and 83. do you know who the warm-up act was for the night? He was the first person on stage and nobody knew who he was. I'm tempted to have an actual guess, but it would just be silly, wouldn't it? Go for it. Go on. Have a, cr have a crack. 55. Well, do, what, when, when did you go? It was 12 years ago. Let's go for 96. Andrew Guild. No, I'm joking. Uh, Michael McIntyre. Yeah, not that far wrong. Kevin Bridges. 100. And he stole the show. Peter, you require 85. So there you go. Stealing the show this week is Daniel. However, JXC has been finishing really well today. Did so in his first match. 71. But not so right Robbie there, offering Collins the opportunity of a 110 out. Double top. Game Collins shot on the first leg. And Jake's Rob will Collins. feel robbed. Still the only thing that Closer has not done this week. The old ton Second plus leg, check out. To throw Everybody first. else seems to be Game doing on. it fine. But just to give you an indication, I don't want to harp on too much about that big average, but Let's face it, it has been the best performance of the week. 100. Seventh highest average of the year. Twelfth highest in total since we went to Southampton at the start of 2021. Second highest here, like I mentioned. And the highest, and this is my favorite of all of the stats that I've been given on that average. It's the highest average from a player outside of the UK and Ireland 60. since we started. Hmm. My favourite is that the second highest average of the week was 137. Was Ryan Murray's average in that match? 
just so, so entertaining to think about. I'm sure Ryan doesn't feel about it that way. Eighty five. Well, Jakes has made a decent start here. Despite those missed couple of doubles, he's in the box seat against a throw. Although he's made a little bit of a mess of that. He can't rescue it. And we did say in the previous match, when he gets around that low 200s level, that's when he seems to have a bad visit. And it's a bad habit. 96. It's not really reflected in anything but his overall average as well, because we tend to keep some statistics in World Darts about the first nine. But visit four 97. is really Robbie important. If you're not taking a 12 data, visit four is on the approach to the finish. And he'll have a choice to make when he comes back. 100. As Collins has let himself a, a simple two data. Jake's may look at the bolt. Oh, no, he's gone straight for it. All out attack. Aim shot on the second And it's line. paid dividends Peter for Peter Jake. Jake's. A 92 checkout in response to the 110 from his opponent. To break in the first leg, that one's cancelled out. Leg, it's and Jake's first is back on, on track. Being a dark player myself, or attempting to be anyway. Finishes like that, forty-two, or what breed confidence? A beautiful first dart, a perfect second dart. You've got a dart left in your left hand, and you're already here in game shot in the second leg. Fifty-eight. That will make Peter feel so good right now. Well, you speak, we speak about that bullseye route there which is kind of old school, guaranteeing yourself a dart of the bolt for the leg. As Jake's weighs in with the match as first match. You said the question earlier, what would Michael Van Gerwen do? And in that situation, he'd go for treble 20 because with three darts, 80. a 92 finish, you're more likely to finish a 92 in, in its entirety going that way than you are going for the bullseye and the stats back it up. Well, I'm going to go with another Dutchman in Raymond van Barneveld because... 59. In an interview about 10 years ago, when everybody was going 25 first on those 90-plus shots, Raymond somewhat famously said, no, I'm going to keep going for the treble because we're world-class players. We should be able to hit a treble with one of the first two darts. And everybody took notice and said, you're right. And more people nowadays are using the treble ring to get to the double, and if they miss it, they're going for a double-double option. So 92, for example, you get a single 20, and they're going to the northeast of the board for two double-18s. That's happening more than ever. We spoke about evolution of certain things in the game, and that's one of them. Collins may end up on the bullseye at the end of his next visit. Seventy-five. Robbie require eighty-nine. It will be the bull. But it isn't the bull, and this is a ninety-plus shot where you can't 98. really use the bull to your advantage. So it has to be the sixty again. Well, there is the argument for double double here, but he's found a treble. Eighty-six. Backed himself to do exactly Robbie what Raymond advised and hit a treble with one of the first two darts, but couldn't find the bit at the end. And Collins on top. Shot on the third line. Now on top, two Rob one. Collins. What a beautiful shot that was! Look at where this goes in. You could take a photograph of that and put it on the wall. Fourth leg, it's Rob's beautiful throw shot first. from Rob. Game on. Break, break, break at the start of this one. That sounds like my back. One hundred. I suppose we have to talk about the fact that this is someone trying to get two points, but denying the other person two points is a big, big thing right now. 60. Jake's on eight points is currently in fifth position in the table. Jake's is in... 85. Sorry, Jake's is in fifth position. Collins is in sixth, but only by one leg. But they're only two points behind Ryan Murray. And maybe a little bit behind him in leg difference, 100. but there is a big race going on for that third spot now. Even the possibility of nicking two spots in the top three, because Greg Ritchie's only on 12. He's only four points ahead. That could be erased by the time we get to, say, match 10 or 11. Yeah, they're on the same points as Mark McGinney as well, who plays Daniel Closer in his next match. 81. 
So they would expect to still be ahead of him, whoever wins this game. Closer looks to carry on a, a fantastic run and make it 10 on the spin. 180! Walks around the stage with real confidence, does Rob. And he should, 60. because that maximum has left him at 58, 58 for a 3 1 advantage. He's been good on tops. Game He's shot been on the fabulous play. on it. Rob Collins. 60% on the doubles in this match with a 94 average. Fast becoming his best performance of the week so Fifth far. And where have we said that first before? Game Already on. today. Yeah, he's hit tops three times to win the three legs. And that the first holder throw in the game. 96. Really puts Collins in charge, uh, having lost his opening match against Mark McGeeney. Best game so far this week. Rob averaged exactly 180. But it's getting better. 98 the average now, two maximums. So if you had 98, a little flutter on this match of two and a half, 180s or better, you're in the money. But remember, it's over 18s only. BeGambleAware.org for more information 94. on that. Please gamble responsibly. And Collins is looking like a pretty safe bet from this position. Jakes does get himself down to a finish first. But even without a treble, Collins can join him. 60. Peter, you require 167. Two cracks at possibly the biggest finish of the week. Biggest so far, 160 from Peter Jakes. That was it very 45. early in the campaign. Rob, you require 167. Problem for Collins with this one is he can't finish on tops. Good point. If only we could. 41. Peter, you, you need require the 122. And again, we saw that little bit of a frailty from Jake's only scoring 45, but Collins followed suit this time, and it allows Peter an opportunity 85. at the bullseye. Rob, you require There's a number you don't see left all the time, 37. He might be squandered on 37. Double six. 120. To a 4-1 victory. Peter, you require 37. Big five, double 16, double eight, 21. Well, he almost busts, but it could Rob, be all over six. for Jake's in this match. It should be. But no isn't. Score. That was PT a bit of a Billy 16. Idol dart there, a bit of a wild one. Does that help or hinder? The fact that he's moved suggests the latter. And that might leave Peter Jakes completely locked out. To hit this, he's going to need Harry Potter. Harry Houdini. And Harry Potter. No score. No Rocky wizardry there. Six. Now Collins looking to finish the job. One. For double one. No score. Collins still can't clinch it. Peter, you require 16. That's six match darts missed in three visits. Game shot on the fifth leg. He's going to have to go Peter all James. the way back to 501 now. The equivalent of losing a hole in the Ryder Cup and then having another chance, but you have to Sixth go to the next Rob's tee. To throw first. Game he off. is teeing off first. Well, tee has been for tops for Rob Collins in this game. He's hit that three times. He hasn't in anything else. Mr. Bull, Mr. Double Six, Mr. Double Three, Mr. Double One. He's probably hoping you could just turn the board all the way around from Double Three to Tops because on the 55. North Pole he's been fine, but the South Pole not so good. One hundred and eighty. Just give me a really good idea, actually, somewhat inadvertently there. Do share. You know how we talk a lot about sustainability Pulse these days? And dartboards are made of plant materials. I don't know whether our fans are actually <laughs> aware of that, but it is made with sisal, which is a plant. Seven. A really good way of recycling dartboards is probably to make them into clocks. 
There you go. Now, I've never I've never made a clock from a dartboard. I might look into that. We'll just quickly get the paper in. 180. Well timed there from Peter Jakes just to put some pressure on, but Collins is 93. running away. And this time, he can leave that favourite double. It's a situation here where he'd probably prefer to miss the treble. He go for it twice. 100. This is true. Rob, you require 80. Yeah, look at that. Completely intentional, this. Building the ladder to tops rather than bothering with doubles 40. he can't hit. But he PC can't hit that on this occasion. I get the feeling that going for the underside of that barrel was probably the right shot to try and give himself a bit more space. Doesn't matter now. He's got plenty of space. In fact, only 85. seven foot nine and a quarter inches Rob, between himself 40. and tops and a 4-2 win. Has to go somewhere else. Two tens. Game shot and the match. And it is a 4 2 Collins. success in the end for Rob Collins. He was looking comfortable for most of the contest, but he kind of fell over the line in the end. A, a fine start to the game. 110 checkout for Rob Collins, who hit 142 earlier on today, but started to show frailties on the doubles. Everything but tops was beyond him until finally he put that right with that double 10 to win the match 4 2. Coming up after the break, Ryan Murray takes on Greg Ritchie. Stay with us. Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series where we've just seen Rob Collins get his first victory of the day. A 4-2 win for him over Peter Jakes in that one. And it does feel like the overall standard of darts has improved today. I'm assuming that's because of the arrival of Chris Murphy and everyone wanting to impress him today. Rob Collins there with an average just over 87 in that one. Another high checkout in excess of a ton from him in that one. He's cut a frustrated figure at times this week. He's started creeping in towards the end of that match as he started to miss on the outer ring. But on the whole, that was quite 
quite a solid performance from him in that one. As you can see, Jakesy with more problems on the outer ring. We can see what that does to the league table after that match. You can see Rob Collins still in fourth place, but he does move into double figures. It looks like he could still challenge, of course, for a place in Group B. He's now level on points with Ryan Murray, who's up next against Greg Ritchie. Both players losing their opening games of the day for Ritchie. It was a real sickener, wasn't it? Because yesterday he won two last leg deciders. He lost out in the first match of the day to Mark McGinney. So let's see who comes out on top in this one in the company of Murph and Nico. Yeah, thanks, Abby. This is the game that could solidify the invitation for Dan Closer into Saturday night because in this all Scottish battle, if Ryan Murray comes out on top, Dan will be there. The middle part of round two is what we've got right now and McGinney will play a closer after this. But Murray and Ritchie this week in the Battle of the Scots. It's currently one all. And we will decide the head-to-head -head record on Wednesday in this third match of the week. First leg. It's Ryan to throw first. Game on. Charlie calls to fame. The referee gets us underway. Very able official. I'm going to stick you straight on the spot before we go into this game. Because over the last couple of days, I've asked Henry... Deacon, our colleague, 100. a couple of interesting questions. Who's your favourite Scottish player? Oh, interesting. 139. I've got different levels of favourite. I think favourite to watch was Gary Anderson, not so much these 95. days. 95. I think Peter Wright's a fascinating story. As a person, probably John Henderson. So, is that a, <laughs> an acceptable answer? Absolutely. 85. Covering all bases, nothing wrong with that. Robert Thornton as well, obviously. A great of the game and will be here this 139. week. So, better say him. He's turning up tomorrow. I'm actually really excited to see Rob. He's a good mate of mine. I've been knocking around him for a good 14 years now. and He's just a lovely 96. bloke. I thought it was going to be harder than that. I thought it was going to be like, which Simpsons character is Charlie Corstaphine? That is a really <laughs> difficult question. I best not go there because our fellow referee Owen Binks was getting a bit of a huff on yesterday because we called him Millhouse. Yeah, he could fall out of himself though in Binks. 55. Ryan, you require 42. Well... Double top. Game shot on the first Murray line. draws first Ryan blood Murray. in this all Scottish showdown. Probably Second the one that is to throw first. a little Game bit on. more experienced than Greg Ritchie, but not by much. Yeah, Ryan's got himself a two-a card. Ultimately had to relinquish it, but not without a little bit of success. He did make a debut at the World Championship. He did have some very good Results at the Winter Series in 2020 when we were there, Murph. He was looking very likely 81. to really springboard himself into a different bracket of players. But I get the feeling that at the end of 2020, when he was finding his best form, 96. the end of the season came at the wrong time. He really wanted the season to continue from there because had it done so, I think he got a, a really good bit of momentum going. 62. And Richie himself did play in the UK Open back in 2020. I'm going to ask you a question now. Do you know who he played? The clue was in the question. 140. It wasn't Woody, was it? I'm going to ask you a question. 125. Jason Askew Jason actually holds the average record. With us of 118 plus, still hasn't been beaten, and it was set 40. in week one last year. Yeah, we do think. I know Chris Mason certainly believes that we're going to see that 120 barrier broken at some point soon. Greg, you require We've seen evidence of that from the likes of Daniel Closer and Ryan Murray, who let's not forget averaged 106 himself. 
Speaking of 106. 86. Ryan, you require 53. Not quite. To double the lead on tops. Break of throw. Possible. Game shot Break the of second leg. Ryan Murray. Greg Ritchie is now in a bit of a dogfight for his top three spot. He may have the points advantage. Third leg, it's Ryan but to someone throw first. is bearing Game down on him right now, and that person is his opponent because he's only two points behind him. And a heavy win here for Murray, who has definitely got out of the blocks today, average-wise. 140. He could extinguish the leg advantage that Greg has if he wins by, say, four legs to nil or four legs to one. Anything but average from 57. Ryan Murray so far. Despite defeating his opener when he ran into a a devilish display from Daniel Closer. 122. In action next and could be confirmed, as Paul said at the start of this match, for finals night on Saturday. In other news, the sky is blue, grass is green. 96. It was such an obvious outcome. But we can just change the question mark into a bold 97. font full stop. We've already talked about so many Scottish things this week. We've already mentioned Kevin Bridges, a famous Scottish comedian. One hundred and thirty-four. actually having a bit of banter Ryan, last night with our referee. Talking about a very famous Robin Williams sketch. Talking about golf. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen the one, yeah. If you've never seen it, it is a guaranteed laugh. That's the biggest shock all day, actually. Banter with Charlie Corstorphine. You're doing him a disservice there. <laughs> 58. Ryan, you're Well, 3 0 imminent. We haven't had a 4 0 yet. We've had every other result so far today. Game shot on the and third it is leg. 3 0. Ryan Murray. That one was hanging on a little bit on the outside wire, wasn't it? But still averaging over 100, not just for this game, but Paul for Flag the day. Greg to throw first. Game on. For legal reasons, I just will point out that Charlie Costafin is a very amiable and entertaining fellow. 100. Aren't many better re referees either, Paul. Yeah, too right. It's a very hard job that they do. 177. In calling so many matches throughout the week. 104 matches we have weekly here at the Motor Super Series. And predominantly it's done by one person. 139. Ryan Murray. What did he have for breakfast? I want some. 85. Heavy dart as well. 28 grams. Second heaviest that I've seen in modern day darts with Ryan Searle, the other one only. He's the only one, other one throwing heavier at 32 grams, but... Heavy darts, heavy scoring. Looking like another lofty average for Ryan Murray, who's around that 106 mark yet 57. again. 57. Lofty. Wasn't he in EastEnders? <laughs> He could probably throw a few darts and... What's the name of the pub? The Queen Vic? 84. Correct. Go on, leave double one. 100. That'll do. Greg, you require 122. But he's got to dodge. A possible check out here for Greg. He's only had one dart a double in this match, besides averaging almost 93. 64. Ryan, you, you were talking about EastEnders. 82. Well, Shane Ritchie might have had more chance of winning this one. Greg's not been at the races, and Murray has been absolutely sublime. 42. Tab cap, a dominant Greg, display. Greg, you 58. Will he complete the whitewash? Depends on what Greg does now. Game shot on the fourth leg. Oh, well, there you go. Greg he, Ritchie. He does miss one double earlier in the match, but he doesn't miss doubles for long. Had Muzz Lightyear hit that tops for the 82, it would have been a ton-topping average and a first two points of the day. But Greg clinging on to that second position in the table 96. currently. He's a gritty little player. Yeah, just to put you all in the picture, Daniel Close, the top of the table on 20 points. A leg difference of 25. Greg Ritchie, second. 
eight points behind, 22 legs behind. And everybody else has a, a negative leg difference, including Ryan Murray, who will still have that, even if he wins this match 4-1 now, because he was on minus four before it started, but will go level on points 88. with Richie. It's getting to the stage where we may have to cut Daniel's arm open and see if he's a Terminator. You got the right accent for it. 85. Yes, before it, anybody tweets me, I know Arnold Schwarzenegger's from Austria. Well, he will be back. Closer takes on Magini in the next game. 140. But it's not about his result at the moment. It's about Richie's result because... 98. Great, you require 152. Saturday secure if Richie can't turn this around. Don't forget about the Group A curse. In stage one, only one player 42. who has made it to Champions Week Ryan, you require won a Group A in the first three days of the week. That was Graham Hall in week three. Since then, Group A has been 54. bad news for the winner. Greg, you require so it hasn't happened yet at this new venue. The Modus Live Lounge. And you could be here on Saturday night. Head to dartshop.tv for all the info. If you live Ryan, you in and around Portsmouth or just fancy a pilgrimage, say you've been. Well, this game will go on. 29. I feel like Celine Dion's heart in Greg Titanic. Greg requires 16. Game and shot the game the does play. go on. 16 dart breaker throw there. And Greg improves his doubling statistics. To two hits from three attempts. Six leg, it's Greg to throw first. Not bad for Ryan, but on. one of those misses was very costly. Cost him the match, in fact. Well, it was looking like a complete cruise for Ryan Murray, wasn't it? But now 57. the iceberg is in vision. It's a very long movie. There's so many puns we could <laughs> pluck from that film. I actually watched it 100. last week. Remarkable so did I. That you brought that up, did you? Yeah, I did. It's still very good. Who's your favourite character? Feet now, that is a question I wasn't expecting this morning. I'm going to say, gonna, this is total left field. John Jacob Astor is my favourite character because I've been to his old house 57. in Hever Castle. And he's got a portrait up in, in there and it looks just like the character from Titanic. But he actually lost his life on the Titanic. And he used to live in Hever Castle, which used to be 57. the uh, home of Anne Boleyn, who was married to Henry VIII. So welcome to your morning history lesson. <laughs> and mine is actually, and I've completely forgotten her name, 45. is the woman who is, she, she's just come into money. Oh, new money, Kathy Burke. Yes. No, not Kathy Burke, Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates, that's yeah. the one. That would have been funny if <laughs> Kathy Burke had done it. She's a genius. 74. The one that gets on the ship with Sherborg. Correct. Yeah. Anyway, same time tomorrow. History and movies. 140. Well, Ryan, you should have gone 19s first, really. Then you could have left yourself a finish for the match. This is not master out. You can't finish 159. 140. Master out is when you can finish on a treble, by the way, because 159 can be hit with treble at the end. It would be that, and that, and treble 13. 127. Greg, you require well, 140. He knew what game he was playing. But is he playing another game in this match? Double top says yes. 94. Ryan, you require 32. This has been such an entertaining match. Murray gets another crack at winning it. Game and win shot. it, he does. And the match, Ryan, Ryan Murray. Murray. Well, he seemed to be in a hurry at the start of the game. Raced into a three-leg lead. Greg Ritchie hit back, but it finishes 4-2 in favour of Ryan Murray. And that means that we can now confirm that Daniel Closer has claimed a spot at finals night on Saturday with four matches to spare. Brilliant stuff from him. Brilliant stuff from Ryan Murray in that one. Gets his just rewards after 106 average defeat against Closer in his previous game. He picks up his first win of the day. Closer coming next against Mark McGinney. Stay tuned.
welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we've just seen Ryan Murray get his first victory in six matches. Nico, that's quite a surprising stat, especially given how he played on day one and how he started this morning. Started fantastically, hasn't he? But I suppose he's been overshadowed by our, uh, well, person who's already through. Incredible stuff from Muz Lightyear so far today, but if he can continue to play that way, then he could find his way to Group B, and that is his goal now. Most definitely, and as you can see on the stats there, 50% checkout success, 92 average. Of course, he didn't reach the heights of the first game. Really unfortunate to, to lose that one. But as for Greg Ritchie now, where do you think he's at? Because such disappointment in his first game and then, and then losing out to just the better player in that second one, it's really, really difficult to regroup. It is a time for him to regroup, but if he looks at the table, he can be very happy with where he stands. He still is in a very, very good position to try and make the top three. But three matches to go, he's probably going to have to win two of the three, I think. And look at that. You mentioned the table, and it comes up just there. Confirmation, of course, that Daniel Closer is our first player through two finals night. Really looking forward to seeing him in action in front of a crowd. It's amazing what happens when you play with no pressure. We've seen what he's done this morning already. What could he possibly do next? Absolutely, and I've seen some Germans tweeting this morning actually saying, oh, it's amazing to see other people are finding out that Daniel Close is not bad at darts. So, you know, he's done it. People do know how good he is outside of this, this venue, but it's good to see him doing it on a big stage. Well, we've already made some titanic jokes today. Not that we were joking about that particular disaster, but it's the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? When it comes to German darts, there are so many different areas of the country that have really big talents but this one is a real education for me, and I'm, I'm really pleased to find another German talent. Yeah, it is incredibly exciting. He's up next against Mark McGinney. Plenty of positives from him to, for him to take after that first win of the day. Yeah, definitely. I think the best start of the week that Mark has had, and this is something can, he can really snowball from here, and I really hope he does because he's a lovely bloke. He's, he's got a lot of experience, a lot of friends in the game, but he's got to fight for himself over the next couple of days, and I'm sure he'll do well. And I think one thing we were saying a lot about him yesterday, he chips away, doesn't he? And I think that's something that could be beneficial against someone like Daniel, who, who just stays on one steady line. The thing about Mark in his career is that uh, he's like a big English oak tree. You try and knock him down, he's just going to stand there and take everything you've got and try and you know make you pant at the end and say, right, I'll quit now. But this is going to be a fantastic match. Two really stoic players who will not give much in the way of emotion. It's about who plays the best and I'm really looking forward to this game. Absolutely, perfectly summed up. Let's get it on. Thanks very much, Abby. Thanks, Paul. And Mark McGinney looking to be the spoiler, looking to end this fabulous winning run from the already qualified Daniel Closer who will be in action at finals night on Saturday and you can see him Tickets available via dartshop.tv. Who will join him? Well, we'll find out over the course of the next couple of days. Double sessions on Thursday and Friday here at the Super Series. Mark McGinney hoping to be in the mix. All the players in this group, of course, as always, will be in action. But in which group? Well, that is now what we are going to see unfold for the remainder leg, it's smart of to the day's first. darts. Game on. Closer. Too far ahead. Mark McGinney can join Rob Collins on 10 points. Two behind the players in the provisional places for Group B. Greg Ritchie and Ryan Murray, who 60. we just saw play out a decent game, which Murray won. 4-2 after that stunning display against this man, which was beaten by an even more stunning display. And Daniel Closer is looking to make it the perfect 10 with a run of victories that could go into double figures here against McGinney. Paul has worked his way down to the comms box. Do you expect him to do so? On form, you would expect Daniel to win this match, of course. But what we have to maybe think about is what motivation does he have? What information does he have at hand 59. to get that motivation for me i would seek out in his position what is my next target for today i can't just amble my way through to saturday night i want to go out from group a with 
a statement to the rest of the field this week. Now, he can break the leg difference record, which is plus 30. He could equal the points record for Group A of 28, which was set in this stage by Jim McEwen. In fact, it was equaled because Colin Osborne's done it before. 52. But he just wants to keep on winning, right? That is the habit that you want to get into as a sports person. Winning is the habit. And we're going to see some players with winning habit in action later this week. We've mentioned already Martin Adams and Robert Thornton joining the action tomorrow. But also Stephen Burton, a player to watch. He's been excellent at the Super Series so far. Yeah, you're not kidding. Very, very good player. 100. Mark to require 119. There'll be three debutants as well. Just Have you been practicing the name of our new Latvian friend? I didn't know Ryan Palmer was Latvian. 99. Daniel, you require 156. We'll, we'll have a practice after this 156. Yanis Mustafayev. Oh, there we go. I've been practicing for a week now. Oh, wow. Chance for Magini to get the first leg because closer, despite threatening the big finish, hadn't completed it, Mark never will. He's never going to get one. Yeah, the, the becoming a running joke now, isn't it? A man who's on an unstoppable run, a run that has taken him to finals game now with four games to spare. Leg. Marmagini. He's on course to win 10 games in a row, yet hasn't hit a three-figure checkout all week. Yeah, the other Second two leg, debutants. It's Daniel to throw first. Along game with, uh, say it again, Paul, I need to learn. Yanis Mustafayevs. Yeah, him, Jordan Brooks, and Ryan the Lion Palmer. Yeah, I was having a bit of a text convo yesterday with the Lion, Ryan Palmer, left-hander from Bristol. 96. Looking forward to seeing him here. Big opportunity for Ryan, I think to put himself in a bit of a shot window. And he's involved in a group which is going to be stacked with a lot of experience. Thornton, 140. And the second and third place finishes from this group. It's not going to be easy for Ryan, but he's the kind of player who will crave the challenge. Yeah, absolutely. And Jordan Brooks will be in Group C. 125. Best mates with Lee Shewan, who we saw a few weeks ago, and of course he was involved in that in that nine dart shootout. Came out on the wrong end of it. Yeah, that for me was the moment of the year so far. That nine dart shootout was epic. They played each other at Lakeside, actually, didn't they, Shewan and Brooks? Yes, they did. Forty five. When I was commentating on that game at Lakeside, I was thinking about what it would feel like to play my best mate, who I actually met. On the 3rd of October, 1988. I can't even imagine what that must have felt like for Jordan. I think Group C is going to be all about Martin Adams, though, isn't it? He will come into that group as a favourite. And you just wonder if McGinney's going to be involved in that group with one of his former England teammates. Yeah, experience really can count. Now can closer close out a big checkout, finally. Double 10. 120. Mark, you require 136. Well, I was about to say, is there anything that he can't do? But yeah, there is. We know McGinney can't take the 136. Come on. Is he going to hit one before the end of the day? <laughs> I just have to say, 60. I don't think he is. Don't you it's just going to be one of those weeks where he's going to get a lot of 90 pluses. Last leg of the day against Peter Jakes, he's going to take out 113. Can he take a double five? Game shot Excellent. on the second leg. Daniel 15 dollars. And Closer gets himself into this match. So far this week, he's had the measure of Mark McGinney Fair beating like him twice. To throw first. Which Game on. I suppose is a measure of just how good a player he is because McGinney, in what he's done in his career, won in multiple countries in the WDF and BDO system. He's had a tour card in the PDC, won the Dutch Open twice. We've talked about that at length this week. It's interesting that the social media activity of 
the Germans, since Daniel has 64. come to the fore this week, is that we already know he's this good. You're just finding out now. Well, that's really good because we want to find players like this. And consider my hat tipped to the people who booked him here. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that we know from visiting European tours, etc., that there really is a thirst but Dart Stars in Germany, I'm sure there'll be plenty tuning in from Germany to watch Daniel oh, Schlosser in action three. today. And I'm going to impress you now as well, Paul. I'm going to greet the German fans. Hello. Is that hello with an ear? Correct. Guten Morgen. Wie geht's? Alles gut. Yeah. Which means, good morning, how are you? Everything is fine. And everything certainly is fine for this man. More than fine, it's wunderbar. You weren't expecting that, were you? Oh, Skatzeichnet, which means excellent. But wunderbar is such a wonderful word. Literally. No, it means wonderful, not literally. I'm not surprised Henry left after a couple of days. 140. Well, it's over to McGinney this time to see if he can get a ton plus out. It's a somewhat frustrating few days, in fact, as Mark. His doubling has only been 29 and a bit percent coming into today. 140. He does have a higher of 155. Mark, you 103. And he did play a very decent stuff against Rob Collins in match two. Averaging 84 there, but his doubles were 67%, so that's the biggest improvement. Double 19. And this is what he hit for the 155. 65. But not on Don't this you occasion. require 84. It was a, a good adjustment to the treble 20, but couldn't find the double that he didn't intend to leave initially. Closer will end up on double 11 if he finds a treble 19, but he's next door, and it's a chance for McGinney to edge ahead 32. here. 32. Mark, you require 38. That's second dart, he found himself on double 35. Splits. He does. Game shot the third leg. And he hits the front. Come on, McGinney. He looks a lot more assured today. Felt a bit lost yesterday with a couple of dodgy displays. Full play gets Daniel to I'm throw not impugning first. him by any means by Game saying on. that, but he started with a 4-1 loss to Ryan Murray, where he averaged 73. Then he was a bit better against Collins, averaging 83. 89 in defeat to Greg Ritchie, but Greg was clinical on the doubles. 59. And another dodgy one against Peter GX, where he lost 4-1 with a 74. But at the end, I think the thing that helped him in his game with Daniel Closa yesterday in match 13 is that it was a good battle. He lost by four legs to three, but he gave it 58. everything he had. And that shows exactly what Mark's about. He's not a quitter. He is someone who, with every visit, gives every dart a lot of purpose and focus and thought. 140. And you can see that. In his visits in this game. I'm going to ask you a quick question about Mark McGinney, actually, Paul, because you're someone with experience of looking after yourself. You were probably a pioneer of that kind of new breed of darts players in terms of health and fitness and, and that kind of thing. McGinney's decline in form did coincide with a dramatic weight loss regime, didn't it? And we've seen it with other players. When it happens really quickly can cause a physical effect on your, your throw. Yeah, it, it does affect the center of gravity, balance, the whole feel of your game. We've seen Phil Taylor's weight go up, up and down like a yo-yo over the course of his career. And he was able to manage it with form and make the necessary changes. But for a lot of people, when they lose a dramatic amount of weight, it has a really bad effect on your form. So, for anybody out there who is looking 65. to better or continue their career, but also make some sort of lifestyle change, the best thing to do is to make a gradual change. Look at what Luke Humphreys did. He lost a bit of weight, but he has changed the lifestyle completely 
45. And Daniel, you that weight loss 97. has been maintained. Oh, will this winning run be maintained? Treble 18 for double 12. No dramas for Daniel with McGinney. 57. So far back. You mentioned the uh, different format earlier on. We've got double start in Leicester as well for the World Grand Prix. Would you like to see a few different formats 100. for the Super Series? Yeah, I, Don't you I think we'd 40? really benefit from having a couple of maybe special nights or maybe a, a special Game stage. Game Daniel, Daniel makes mincemeat a 5 or one straight start there in 16 darts. Could it possibly be his first defeat since it's game two first of game Monday? On. But possibilities for change of format. We could go double start. We could go three or one straight start. We could do three or one double start, which would be real quick fire stuff. 140. But the one thing that Henry and I talked about on Monday, which I'm really interested about, and it's completely left field, is that we are having darts on October the 31st. I think we should have a Halloween special where everybody's in fancy dress. Just for the day. 100. It would be different. Yeah. We'll, we'll see about that. Does that mean you're here on October 31st? <laughs> I don't you know, don't want to do it. No, I need to look at my rotor. What kind of format would you like to see? Would you like to see I like... a ladies week? Yeah, I think that's certainly something that could be incorporated. I think it would be fascinating if we could get, for example, Bo Greaves, Fallon Sherrick, and Lisa Ashton here at the same time. Yeah, and a few of the... 60. You know, the figureheads of Japanese darts over as well, yeah. and maybe Tori Kewish from Australia. Uh, of one thing that I haven't seen for a long, long, long time, and I think would work in a short format, is having a level darts tournament. 121. Yeah, that's really interesting. It just adds another element at the end of legs. We'd have to get used to it as well. There was a, a video circulating on YouTube recently of Bob Anderson versus Phil Taylor in equal darts. And some people were asking me Mark about it. And said, this is very, very common back in the day. Well, this is for a, an 11 dart leg for Mark McGinney. Game shot on the fifth leg. Nothing closer could have Mark done even McGinney. if it was equal darts. Because McGinney has blown him away in that leg, and is one leg away from ending a nine-match winning streak. Sixth leg, it's Daniel to throw first. Game I may off. have said this line already this week, but in the words of General Melchett from Blackadder, that's more like it. And he said that when he was looking at 16. one of uh, Edmund Blackadder's paintings, when in fact it was painted by George. If you haven't seen that episode of Blackadder Goes Forth, you haven't lived. Very funny, but very apt statement from General Melchett because, quite frankly, Mark, 100. this is more like it. This is very good. And to be honest, if you had seen, if you had told Mark McGinney that Daniel Closer would average 20 points fewer in this 58. match than he did in his previous game, or around that mark, he still wouldn't have felt confident he would have beaten him because he averaged... Over 111. Yeah, that's true. Yesterday, when Mark played 96. Daniel, weirdly, <laughs> Daniel was averaging around about this right now. And it was a very close battle, and it is once again. He might need it, you know. You know, we said, will he get one by the end of the day? That elusive three figure checkout. Well, Daniel Closer might need one. Bit like two comic book nerds going after the same comic when they say, got it, Easy got four. it, got it, got it, need it. Yep. Just look at those stats there. It's pretty even, isn't it, between the pair? And nobody has really managed to match Daniel Closer all week. So this would not be an un unwarranted win for Mark McGinney, should he get over 95. the line. You would assume that Daniel knows he's safe. It's not as if he's really lowered his excellent performance overall. I know he had that 111 average earlier. 66. But he doesn't strike me as the kind of person who is just going to coast his way through to Saturday. I think he will really want to win 
five out of five again today, like he did on Tuesday. Is he moving downstairs? 140. He decided against it, but he gets Mark himself below the top. 155. He's already hit this against Daniel this week. He's not going to do it again for the match. No deja vu. But it 45. could still be an unfamiliar Daniel feeling for Daniel Closer, 89. who may have to take this out. 57 for starters. The man who can't be moved from the top of the table. Trying to go against the script. 84. And that certainly Mark wasn't in it. Require 110. And McGinney might be about to rip it up. This would do Mark the world of good. It would get him to 10 points. Alongside Rob Collins and only two points behind Richie and Murray after round number two is over. 70. And he can't do Daniel right there what five. Daniel has failed to do all week. Again, he just turns around to have a look at the last minute. Double one to keep Game the run going. The sixth leg. Then Daniel closer closer. clinches. The sixth leg of the match and it goes the distance down to a decider. McGinney has the darts, but we all know Seven and final that Daniel leg. Closer it's to throw first. has the momentum on. of a snowball that's been rolling down a mountain. At a very sustainable pace. 140. But it is very, very evident that McGinney is in a much better mental space today than he has been the last couple of days. Like a lot of players have said to me when I've bumped into them around these halls and some previous halls, 96. it's not where you stand after Wednesday, it's where you are playing on Saturday. I'll tell you what, for a game 59. that for one player has absolutely nothing on it, I do sense a bit of meaning. A bit of tension. I'm pretty certain that Daniel Closer is determined to extend this winning 50. run. And he's making the game important. I would be. If I was in this position, I would have that inherent feeling of I haven't lost in a while. And I don't want to feel like that. Losing sucks. Even when you are safe and you have 74. got the job done. That feeling of losing a darts match or any sporting activity, it's not nice. Well, will losing a dart there make a difference for Mark McGinney? Because one on the floor just offers a little little optimism to his opponent. Who finds a couple of trebles. Very similar to the battle he had yesterday, which was a very good game. But this time, McGinney's got the darts and he's using them fabulously. Don't forget, he's already missed one for the match. He's going to get more. He's going to get two more, barring a disaster on his next visit. Well, you know what the Oliver Reed advice was to Maximus Decimus Meridius? Win the crowd. Oh, there's no crowd. One hundred. Don't win the crowd, win the crown. Mark, you require 48. Well, Closer has got the crown in Group 8. But he might be about to be overthrown here by Mark McGinney. Game and he has shot been. And the match. And he's been Mark outthrown McGinney. as well. A 4 3 success for the Gladiator, who ends a nine match winning run from Daniel Closer, whose place at finals tonight is already confirmed. But Mark McGinney has given himself a much bigger chance of making it through to Group B with that unlikely victory, it has to be said, based on what we've witnessed so far. But full credit to him, he fully deserved it, and he picks up the win. 4-3 against the top-placed player, Daniel Closer, who will be back in action in a couple of games' times against Rob Collins. But before that, Peter Jakes faces Ryan Murray.
Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth, where we've just seen Mark McGinney come through a last leg decider to condemn Dan Closer to just his second defeat of the week here at the live lounge. There you can see the tail of the tape, Daniel Closer, a bit of a drop off for him in that one. He was still able to force a last leg decider, though, of course, Mark McGinney was the player who pushed Closer the most yesterday, losing out in a last leg decider yesterday, but he's come out on the right end of it today. We really are seeing a much more assured and confident Mark McGinney up on stage today. An 11 dart leg in the middle of that one as well. 100, his highest checkout, 50% on the outer ring. Really clinical display from him in that one. We can see what that does to the table. Of course, it doesn't really matter for Daniel Closer, who is already through to Saturday's final night on 20 points, of course. Greg Ritchie and Ryan Murray joint on 12 points. Mark McGinney, Rob Collins on 10. It is Jakesy against Murray up next. So Murray with the opportunity to leapfrog Greg Ritchie into second place and grab a bit of a firmer hold on a place in Group B, of course. Ryan's been sublime so far today. One average in excess of a ton and, of course, Another fantastic display, especially at the back end of legs in his first victory in six attempts in his last match. So that will, of course, give him much confidence going into this one. As for his opponent, well, he was just 18% on doubles in his last match. That's certainly an aspect of his game that will need to improve in this one. Charlie Corstefin is ready up on the stage, so let's hand back to our commentary team. Thanks, Abby. Yes, Ryan Murray has been magical so far today. And Peter Jakes finds himself at the foot of the table after that defeat to Rob Collins a couple of games ago. Murray then managed to get the better of Greg Ritchie after losing to Daniel Closer with an average of 106. How will he be feeling after seeing Closer than average just over 90 in his next match and go on to get beaten? That man there is... Charlie Corstafine giving the big billing. Probably the longest name graphic we've got here at the Super Series. First leg, it's Peter to throw first. But if Peter Jakes can Game win on. this match, Paul, then it's going to make that race for Group B very, very interesting indeed because you would then have a couple of players on 12 and three on 10. Could I just for a second take off my neutral hat right now? Go for it. I actually want him to win. No, you, were you nothing, here to give an opinion? Yeah, it's nothing against Ryan at all, but from a neutral perspective, 85. we've already got one person in Saturday night. We could almost have another tournament to the end of Wednesday because if we've got three players on 10 points and two on 12, 100. anything is possible. I will, of course, remain professional and unbiased. Come on, Jake Z. 80. That's because he's from Yorkshire, right? Actually, from the same birthplace as me. Hospital. No, Huddersfield. 40. I really wish we'd stop quoting Black Adagor's fourth. <laughs> Come on, Baldrick. We're going on holiday. Oh, where are we going? Hospital. Well, that's where the, the Terrier nickname comes from, of course. 60. Huddersfield Town, the Terriers. He does play a bit like a terrier, doesn't he? Just nips at your heels the whole time. And he's very hard to dispose of. 100. Because he almost reminds me of Robert Thornton a bit. Gets on with it, high scoring most of the time. And I can see Peter Jakes being 60. the bogey player of quite a few high talents. Used to be a postman, Peter Jakes. What is it about postman becoming excellent darts players? I really don't know. Like Sid Waddell used to say about Barneveld, I bet he could probably throw the letters 42. through the letterbox. Peter, you require 40. Your column was a post, postal worker Game as well, wasn't it? It was. Peter Straight Jakes. in the letterbox of number 40 there. Peter Jakes to take the first leg. Second leg, it's Ryan to throw first. Game on. I could have said something really controversial there. It's almost as if Peter Jakes is doing more delivering the postal service at the minute. But 85. we'll not go there. 
We're here for darting entertainment, yeah. not politics. Opinions on darts, but we will remain politically Swiss. 100. And we have had a Swiss player here in Stefan Belmont. I wonder if we're going to get any more. I mean, Thomas Younghans, Andy 60. Bless. There's a few more. Yeah, the scope isn't there for so many players. In fact, do get involved on social media at MSS Darts. Let us know who you would like to see. You can tag myself and Paul at the Asset 180 at Chris Murphy 180 as well. Give us a few suggestions and we will pass 96. them on to the powers that be. I suppose the best player that we haven't had come here to Super Series Darts yet is Phil Taylor. Yeah, he has been here, but just not on the hockey. Sat in this very chair on our launch night, did the power. I was very impressed with the setup and teased the prospect of playing in it at some point. At this point, we're telling him he's got to qualify. Uh, by the way, the, the criteria is that you don't have a PDC Tour card, so don't send us any suggestions of professional players. Is anybody outside of the top 128 in the world? That would be a fine suggestion. And we 90. will announce the PDC players for the last 81. week of qualifying for Champions Week for next week on Saturday night. Bullseye for Peter Jakes. On the second leg. Well, Abby said Peter Jakes. in the link to this match that Peter Jakes needed to sharpen up his finishing. I think he heard her. Third leg, it's Peter to throw first. Game on. Yeah, two from two. That'll do. And what he wants to do more than anything else is keep Ryan Murray from getting a shot at a double. You do that, you will win. Ninety-six. Such an up-and-down sport, isn't it? He starts with a, a massive average, but a loss. Then he comes down in statistics by around 10 points and wins. 59. And then it's a very different thing altogether with another opponent now averaging high 90s. One and Ryan doesn't have an answer until now. Here's the matcher's first maxi coming from Murray. 84. Another thing we shouldn't talk about is Scottish football. I don't know who Ryan supports. Or indeed, 137. Greg Ritchie, but I'm sure somebody told me who he supports last year. 98. Probably best not to go there. Anyway, two little snowmen for Ryan Murray to get his first leg on the board in this one. And Jakes is going to have another look. And guess what? From 88, 37. Ryan Murray did not get a shot at PT double. PT require 120. But still does have that donut next to his name on that stat. But he'll have attempts at double now because Ryan Jakes has made 51. a mess. Unless he goes and busts or something silly, but that won't happen. Will this happen? Game shot on the it third does. leg. It looked very Ryan inviting, Murray. didn't it? It does for Muz. Well, yesterday Fourth he was wearing a, a bright blue Game shirt on. and he had a bad day. And I somewhat speculatively said, well, surely if he's superstitious, he's going to go back 100. to the shirt that he wore on Monday. He's having a better day today in this colour. So he doesn't play very well in his away shirt. Speak Peter, though, is in his third different shirt of the week. Speaking of uh, people getting in touch on social media, we, ha we have had a few but on different things that we've discussed this week. A seniors or youth the week. Uh, the friends at the FDI, Darts Oracle Power Rankings, have suggested. A women's week, which we did talk about. That one coming from Oki Balboa. Fraser Good as well. He wants to see Wes Newton on the big stage. We did see Wes in Southampton in our previous studio. Great moment, actually, when he tapped his opponent on the shoulder to let them know they dropped the flight just before he was about to release the dart. Yeah, Wes has lost a bit of timber recently. He's looking very well. Be nice to see him back. A couple of his close pals have played recently, and one of them is coming this week in Jordan Brooks.
And a fellow Fleetwood flinger. It's a Yorkshire Terrier. Peter Jakes 91. is getting his teeth into this PT match. And he's looking 100. to take out a ton and carry on this run of outer ring prowess. That is the 60. reaction of a dart that is tapered towards Ryan, the nose. You require 80. With his previous darts, which somebody actually t sent me a picture of this morning on social media, so thanks for that. That might not have happened. Double five. 75. And that is Peter, the likelihood 40. of an under-delivered dart by Muz Lightyear. Very heavy darts, and sometimes they can be a bit Game bottom heavy. The fourth and it's now 3-1 for Jake Seeks. It's 1-1 one, one in their head-to-head -head record for the week. Someone's got to win it in Group A. Who's it going to be? More likely leg, it's to be Jakes than Murray, Game especially on. with stats like that. Yeah, every picture tells a story. That tells one story, but this tells the main one. Hasn't missed a single dart double in the entire game. Three hits for him, three misses for Murray, and therein lies the difference. That's the old red balloons average, isn't it? 140. 99. That'd be a good walk-on song for Daniel Closer, that, because they did a German version of that song, didn't they? Called 99 Loop Balloons. 60. It'd be very popular with a crowd on Saturday night. 45. Still need to work on a, a nickname for closer. And that's another suggestion we need. Help us out. Form of the graphic there. At MSS Darts. Get rid of Dan the Man. What about closer encounters of the third kind? Um, 100. You know what? I'm going to say no, Paul. Is that you out <laughs> in Dragon's Den fashion? Well, no one's going to be out of this Fancy race for one. Group B, and uh, we are getting the outcome that, as neutrals, we wanted, because Peter Jakes, the victory here, would make it very interesting. Two points between second and sixth in that new league table, the, the without Daniel Closer table. What doesn't help Peter Jakes in his quest for the top three Ryan is his leg difference. It's not good at minus 11. He may need Murray to miss this. 68. And there you go, Peter. There's Peter a little gift for you. 32. Murray does miss. It's now five missed at double. That's a first for Peter Jakes. Followed swiftly by the second, and he's struggling to find a way past here. Gonna have to bend one in. 16. And he can't quite manage it. Ryan well, require eight. So often it's not about what you miss, how many you miss, but when you miss. And Jake's miss a golden opportunity to win the match, but that could be a help to him. No score. Peter, you That was a goal for Broke Dart there from Murray. He could barely see that double two. He doesn't like the lie of the dart. Game but he likes the shot. result of that one. And the match. It's a Peter vital 4-1 victory. And with Jakes at the foot of the table, you would think in the middle portion of Wednesday that he'd be out of the running for the top three. But I assure you, he's not. That's a good performance. Ultimately, he's 50% on the checkouts. It was 100% before the end of that leg. But a very solid performance in taking out Murray by four legs to one. We now have three players on 10 points, two on 12. We'll talk more about that race for the top three when we return after this short break. When we come back, it will be Rob Collins and Daniel Closer here in round three.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we've just seen Peter Jakes record another important victory over Ryan Murray. The scoreline was 4-1 when the two players met yesterday in favour of Jakesy and it's darting deja vu because it's the same scoreline here today. An average in excess of 93 for Jakesy in that one. He was perfect on the outer ring until that last leg eventually doing enough to get over the line. But as you can see there, four darts missed out at double in that final leg of the match. As for Murray, just one out of nine on the outer ring, something that is going to need to improve if he wants to clinch that second spot. We can see what that does to the league standings. Of course, another reminder that Daniel Closer is already through to finals night. Ryan Murray remains on 12 points with Greg Ritchie, but you can see how congested that table is now with just two points separating the players in second down to sixth. So it is very much all to play for in terms of qualifying for Group B. Next, we've got Closer against Collins. Of course, Dan Closer losing just his second match of the week in his last match. It'll be interesting to see how he responds to that. But of course, no pressure on him having already qualified. As for Collins, well, his finishing has left a bit to be desired so far today but he has taken out two ton plus finishes already in his matches this morning let's see then how this one unfolds in the company of chris and nico thanks abby yeah, it is bottom against top now as collins takes on closer although bottom is also tied for in collins's case on the same points as jake's and mcgee in fact the same leg difference as peter jake's on minus eight. And Daniel Closer has twice as many points as his opponent in this one and is already through to finals night, as we've been mentioning, but did lose for the first time in 10 when he lost out to Mark McGinney a couple of games ago. And we were just pondering, Paul, whether or not that was a bit of a a foot off the gas moment because he knew he was through. Although it was a very good game, hard fought. And now, as Abby pointed out, he'll be looking for a response because he doesn't want to limp into first leg. It's round on Saturday, does he? Having game charged on. there to that point. Yeah, he doesn't want to do that at all. But he is up against the other person who has beaten him this week in Rob Collins. That came in game two on Monday. 140. So maybe the right opponent right now for Daniel. Now we're going to find out what he's like when he's lost. The last time he lost, he went on a bit of a run. 99. Is he going to do it again? You just have to stay with us to find out. As for Rob Collins, there's a lot riding on this match. This is his third game of the 60. day. Ryan Murray and Peter Jakes have already played their third game of the day. Mark McGinney and Greg Ritchie have got a game in hand after this. But that fight for the top three is about as close as I've seen in many a week. Yeah, there is a scenario where if Mark McGinney can beat Greg Ritchie after this, if Collins can get the better of closer. 26. And then McGinney loses out to Jake. You could have four players on 12 points as we approach the end of the day. In fact, you could have 98. four on 12 and one on 14. At this stage, do we say that Daniel's very happy that that battle's going on and he doesn't have to worry about it? <laughs> I think so. One well, how long are we going to keep saying that the Daniel one thing that Daniel Closer hasn't done is taken out a three-figure finish? What better finish to take out to end the chat than 40, 130 when he comes back? Yeah, he wants the baby fish, not the big fish. He's not going to get a look at it. Oh, sorry, he is. 79. Daniel, you require right 130. Then. 60 and another. There's oh. not a dark player on the planet who doesn't like this finish. Well, still 60. But it's difficult now. 
Can he? 105. Oh. On the green, Robbie not in the hole. 16. You notice both players did the old see what's around the corner lean there, as if to say, I can't see if that's in the 60. Game well, that shot one's in the a double eight. Leg. No leaning Rob required. Collins. And Collins gets the ideal start. 17 darts, which, when you think about it average-wise, Murph, Second that's leg. probably around first. about where you need to be Game to contend on. in a group like this because it's 88 and stuff. Maybe you'll have to chuck in a few five-visit legs or possibly an 11 darter like we've seen from Peter Jakes today just to get yourself a bit further up 60. the table. But I've seen many a person come through a group averaging 88 over the last year and a half. Yeah, you will see enormous averages from time to time in these short format matches. But when the averages really tell a tale 60. is when you look at them over the entirety of a day or the entirety of a group. And usually someone averaging around 90-ish is going to be competitive at the top of the table. 100. It is a marathon when you play here in a week. When you think about the kind of training that a sprinter would do, for instance, in athletics, it's 100. very specific. If you're playing one game of best of 11 per day, you have to peak for that one match. With us here, you've got to peak five times. That is a, di that's a different skill. 100. And imagine if you're getting a win, then a loss, then a win, then a loss, and another loss. It's about how your mentality and how your mood changes throughout the day. It's a very difficult thing to master. Well, this Colin's going to be the second man to master Daniel Closer in as many matches and the first to master him twice. 140. Have you had any suggestions about a nickname for Daniel yet? I don't think so. I'm annoyed at myself for not thinking of anything decent with a, an open goal of a surname like that. Right. Well, his first name. 100. There's an Elton John Daniel, you require song 101. called Daniel. It's not the kind of stuff you would walk onto. It's a bit, a bit too melodic. A bit nice. Well, there's another song, isn't it, called Tiny Dancer, which features the lyrics, Hold Me Closer. 41. Rob, you require he could go with full Elton John tribute act type darts play, couldn't he? Daniel, hold me closer and come out in the full Donald Duck suit. I can't believe you brought up that song. That's actually my alarm tone. 42. Daniel, you require 60. Doesn't have to move. Game shot on the second why. leg. Daniel Closer. Perfectly done. Another two-dart kill from the deadly German. Well, Just last time I was leg, commentating with you, Paul, we talked a lot about on. that finish, that 60 finish. And he showed there that it's not one that seems to trouble him because that the dart doesn't stand massively to attention for him. But it is something that a lot of players are going to have to find a way around because it does pose a problem for many. Absolutely right. Yesterday, when we were casting an eye over the World Grand Prix, Daryl Gurney threw a flatty, and he got everybody in a tiz about it, but to us, it's just old news. But it's just brilliant to see a player 96. do something that makes a lot of sense and have the courage to do it, where he has a very long dart that sits up to attention, and when he needs 60, he throws a flatter dart to make sure that the flight and the stem are not in the way. As you can see from that camera angle from the side 85. for Daniel, is that the dart flight is actually pointing at the floor when he brings it towards his face, enhancing what is a very loopy throw. Yeah. A very big arc of the dart through the air. So that's why that dart was not in the way on the 60 checkout for him. A 60 checkout for Rob Collins is a harder finish than it is for Daniel Closer. Correct. That's a good dart for him right there. He's trying to stack it on the top. And this is surely a 180. Oh, go and get it quickly. He's a good sprinter. Rob, you require 85. A bit of a Heike Drexler there. We know that Collins loves double top. Game shot on the third And he line. pins it. Rob Collins. Well, you said earlier that it was a marathon, not a sprint. But Daniel Closer had other ideas then. 
However, this race is being won by Ron Collins at the moment. Yeah, Daniel Klose is not so much a Heike Drexler. He's more of a Dieter Baumann, a great German middle distance runner. I promise you, I did not search for that. That's in the old memory bank, that one. Fourth leg, it's Daniel Very to throw first. I can confirm it. He's telling the truth. And it wouldn't surprise me anyway. I'm just waiting for darts to find its own Norwegian superstar. 42. In athletics, you've got Jakob Ingebrigtsen. And there are lots of other people coming through in Norway, like Erling Haaland. I mean, what is he 100. doing in the Premier League? He's having it for breakfast. But we did do some women's darts recently. And there was a very good young lady player called Iseline Howen. Maybe she could be the Norwegian darting superstar we've been looking for in Scandinavia. 100. Remember the uh, Norwegian player at the lakeside, Runa Davies? Uh, don't forget about Robert Wagner as well, the magician who used to do somersaults on stage. Uh, David actually had, we, we spoke about that, that moment that got social media going here with uh, Danny Lauby dart that hit the floor uh, wasn't intentionally thrown but David actually did intentionally throw one that didn't reach a board if you remember One hundred and forty. there's a really good illustration of how Rob is knitting those darts together he's doing a very good job in this game 2-1 up averaging 99 just like his opponent Ninety-seven. This is a high-quality match. And the only mistake that Rob has made in this leg is leaving 165. And that's not the first time this week that he has stayed in motion and looked elsewhere before he throws the dart. Getting closer. Double seven. 108. By the way, Rob, loved Rob, that little, I want to be in the shot, little lean there. It's like a photo bomb. Well, that dart was almost out of shot. 22. Oh, the pain. Daniel, you require 14. He didn't want to leave double nine, I assure you. Daniel Closer is allergic to ton plus finishes. <laughs> Look at Rob Collins behind him. He, uh, such an animated operator, isn't he? Almost punched himself off the stage. James shot on the fourth leg. And Daniel that will hurt. Closer. The chin is up in the air. Rob Collins needs to shake it off. Well, Rob Collins, fifth leg. I suppose we'd have to, to categorise him as Game a walking, on. talking, animated, darting soap opera. Doesn't leave much to the imagination. 16. You mentioned it actually earlier. I think it's a great phrase, stage presence, because that's something that we've been able to see in this new venue, even without a crowd. We saw during COVID times, the PDC did a fantastic job of putting events on and players were still able to show that stage presence. It's not all about having a crowd in the arena, is it? Not at all. It's about having comfort when you're elevated off the ground and being able to play under these kind of lights as well. The, the man, I think, who oozes it from all the players that I've seen at the Super Series so far is Kevin Painter. Correct. It's like he was born to play on stage. He'll be a happy man after the result for Ipswich last night. Are you? Certainly not. No, last-minute defeat 100. at Plymouth for the mighty Sheffield Wednesday. I'm extremely happy with Miggy Almiron's volley from the other day. So am I, in my fantasy team. There you go. 100. You've got, you've got your stuff together. You know what to do. Did you triple captain Erling Haaland like everybody else in fantasy football? Just captained him. Would you put Daniel Closer in your Super Series fantasy team this week? I suppose you would now. It's difficult, isn't it, with the more unknown quantities, but some of them have come and shown what they can do. What about that for an idea? Fantasy darts at the Super Series. I think there'd be a few people who want to get involved in that. Who's out there that can organise it? Come on. 
There you go. Gauntlet laid down to everybody out there. If you think it's a good idea, be my guest. Get in touch with the powers that be at the Motor Super Series here in Portsmouth. 60. I think it would be a good thing to do. Who would you triple captain this week? Would you do it to Wolfie? Would you do it to Thornton? Or would you give it to a debutant? Well, actually, there'd be some skill in it. You probably don't don't want to pick the player that wins Group A, do you? Because he's going to play less. Don't you less. require Correct. 156. There'd have to be some sort of caveat. Mm. Right, 156, his latest attempt. An enormous finish. That one's not going to happen either. What kind of animation are we going to get from Rob Collins on this 74? It's going to be pleasure or pain. Rob, you require 74. Which one of the P's? Oh, well, it could be either still. 20 and bull. Bullseye for pleasure. Game shot on the feet. Sweet play. spot hit. Rob Collins. I think that celebration is something to do with Superman. Up, up, and away. Super gets Daniel to throw first. Game Close on. there is on the brink now of a second straight defeat. Remaining matches for the day against Greg Ritchie and Peter Jakes. So he's going to have a big impact on who qualifies behind him in a different group. But you got to see it. Greg has played some good stuff today, as has Peter. 140. Are they finding Daniel out a little bit here? But it's easy for me to say that. Look at these statistics. Daniel's not playing bad. I think everybody else is playing better. 100. Is it true you've been around practice rooms for many many years and and it's not like other sports where players are getting 40. ready in different dressing rooms etc you're all in there together is it true that a player can start to get a bit of a target on their back bred by their own success unquestionably as soon as phil taylor was in the practice room everybody just thought right 60 we want to get that person the person who is the biggest hitter in the practice room gets all the attention everybody looks their way 85. Playing in a world championship session, for example, you're always looking out for the, the high seed that's on that day. Mm. Did you did you suffer from it a little bit when you burst onto the scene? I don't think so. I think everybody was a bit ignorant to my talent at the start, which I was more than happy with. But after a little bit of time, Rob, there were a few years where I was the target man. Now, for most players, 106 is a more than makeable out shot. Daniel, you require For Daniel Closer, he hasn't got a chance. Improbable. Impossible. It's not going to happen. Forget it. It won't happen. Game shot on the sixth leg. Daniel Closer. Mike dropped. It's finally happened. It's a ton plus finish for Daniel Closer. And he gives us absolutely no emotion. He may be Daniel. a Terminator after all. That's called the reverse curse, by the way. 140. Well, can he turn it around? Collins off with a two treble turn. Yeah, if you are just tuning in, the reason for that little bit of fun is because despite the dominance of Dan in Group A, he hadn't hit a three figure finish until that point. 96. Even with a defeat here by four legs to three, his leg difference would plummet to plus 23. 140. Fair play to Rob Collins, who is squeezing the lemon for all it's got. Two 140s to start this seventh leg. It's in these positions where you see the real animation of Man of Steel. Any idea why he's called that? 95. I'm not sure exactly. Well, he's still at the red bit. It'd feel like a steal for Dan if he was to win this, wouldn't it? I was actually saying yesterday that a, a good nickname for Daniel Closer would be Steely Dan. Henry didn't even know the band. 
60. I think Rob Collins does work in 60. Rob, you require the construction trade, so that might be something to do with it. Can he construct the 116? It may be so. 80. There we go. It's been fed to me. He is a steel erector, in fact. That makes a lot of sense, then. I suppose we have to say at this point, is it a bird? Is it a plane? 43. Rob, no, it's a win. 36. And it's a second win against Daniel Closer for Rob Collins and a second defeat for Daniel Closer in his many matches, if this goes in. Game and he uses the metal. And, the and there you Rob see Collins. the unmistakable animated expression of Rob Collins. Just look at him. Daniel Closer defeated for the second time in as many games. Collins off to tell the rest of the practice room how to do it. 4-3, the success, and it's two defeats on the bounce for Closer, who has already qualified for finals now, but Rob Collins puts himself firmly in the picture for a second or third place finish and the reward of being in Group B tomorrow. A 97.47 average, 7 one is plus two 180s in that match for Collins. A really good win and Daniel Closer finally got that three-figure finish. We've got uh, Greg Ritchie and Mark McGinney coming next, so do stay with us for that. Welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth, where we've just seen Rob Collins condemn closer to his second successive defeat in Group A. It was a 4-3 victory for Collins in that one. We are starting to see a little bit of a drop-off from closer in the last two matches, but of course, it is hard to judge him on this because he's through to finals night already, as you can see there, closer still with 50% on the outer ring, and importantly, he finally gets that first tumble 
plus checkout of the week. It's something that we've been talking about a lot over the course of the three days. It's the one thing that has been missing from his play. Rob Collins with a high checkout of 85 in that one. As we mentioned, Closer has lost his last two games. The lads mentioned it in commentary as well, that he will want to go into finals night on a winning streak. So important that he bounces back in his next match. We can see what that victory for Collins does to a very congested league table. I think it's fair to say it now moves him level with Ryan Murray and Greg Ritchie on 12 points. So applies the pressure back on those two for a spot in Group B. Greg Ritchie is up next against Mark McGinney, who can join those three players on 12 points with a victory here. And with Ryan Murray, of course, losing his last match, this is a fantastic opportunity for both players. Ritchie to take a firmer grip on a Group B spot on Mark McGinney to apply the pressure on Muzz Lightyear in third. So then, Mark McGinney has produced some of his best darts in Group A over the course of today's action. Can that continue in this next match? Let's find out and hand back over to the commentary team. Thanks, Abby. And the end of round three of our games today is imminent. And it is just as important as Abby has mentioned. Richie with a game in hand on the chasing pack will be looking to get himself up to 14 points. He would have a two-point buffer over the likes of Murray and Collins if that was to happen. However, if McGinney wins and keeps his good day going, his unbeaten day going, he will be on 12 points with Collins, Murray and Ritchie with only Peter Jakes languished on 10. Interesting times ahead, Chris Murphy. Yeah, it really is. And I think it was a good description congested in that league table. There certainly is traffic in that race for second and third place, having already seen Daniel Closer seal top first spot. Leg, it's great to throw first. Game on. Now, if you are new to the Moda Super Series or just need reminding, the reward for finishing second or third is a place in Group B where three players from the five qualify for finals night. If you finish fourth, fifth or sixth, it's Group C. The morning session, same time, Thursday and Friday, as this session in Group C, and only two players from six go through. So really is something to play for, even though that top spot and that place at finals night has been confirmed. The winner of Group C last week was Josh Payne. He made mincemeat of that group, winning nine out of ten games. But ultimately, it was another week for Josh where he got a shot to win the week and couldn't do it. So Josh Payne will not be in Champions Week after being in two finals. But he's not the only person who did that. Dave Pallet also lost in two weekly finals. Yeah, there is a, a cap. You can only have two bites of the cherry at most in one of the... 134 stages here at the Super Series. They now last 13 weeks, 12 to qualify for Champions Week, and then the Champions Week itself, which will hand out a record £20,000 first prize. Are you a fan of the new qualification criteria? Because I am. Greg, I think it lends itself to more talent coming through. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We'll see more players for a start. More opportunities. Double 18 here to show Game shot on the first some, some talent. Greg Ritchie. From this tartan clad thrower but yeah i think we'll see more players for a start Second but you also get a champions first. week Game which on. is exactly that because it's 13 sorry 12 winners in week 13 100 i'm not entirely sure if that is the richie tartan you know well, you've had a look, have you? I have had a look. Now, Richie Tartan looks a bit more crimson and green. Maybe it's got some sort of other meaning. I'm sure 85. if Greg makes finals night on Saturday, we can have our interviewer have a little or a wee chat with him. Well, we might be having a wee chat with him at some point today. Certainly, was thinking it would be the case if he carried on the pursuit of perfection there. Talking about a nickname for Daniel Closer, I mean, he's already got one. I don't believe Greg Ritchie has. 45. 
We'll just call him the wee man. That's what everybody in Scotland calls their little boy when they have one. He's 27 years of age, and there's nothing wrong with being slightly smaller in stature because that's exactly what Phil Taylor was. He was well under six feet tall, as was Jockey Wilson. Sometimes having a lower center of gravity is actually a benefit to when you're throwing projectiles. Game oh, especially now. Low. That's an 11 Ritchie. It's near we are. It's pretty good. Game He's on. thrown 22 darts in the match. Back to back, 11 dart legs for Greg Ritchie. Look at the difference in the average. 81. It was 65 points. It's been a strange old day, hasn't it? Really bizarre. E every player 96. must be feeling this sort of weirdness that they're going up one game, playing really well, maybe even losing, and then running into a player in the next game who hasn't played fantastic, but suddenly produces 57. incredible stuff. And they don't play so well themselves. It, it's been a really bizarre day. You have days like that as a darts player, don't you? One game to the next can just be such a fluctuation. Absolutely right. Mark's probably thinking after two legs. Oh, Greg's in the mood. Here we go. Sometimes you see a player and you think, am I going to be able to catch them? I have stood behind some of the greatest players of all time. 59. And there have been times where I thought, do you know what? I'm just a bit part player here. Yeah, front row seat. Feeling. But you have to believe in yourself. You have to give yourself the best chance. 31. Mark was doing that right there by using the 19s on 265. It was the right application. But the execution was a little bit further off. Well, in the previous couple of legs, Greg hadn't had to throw that last dart, that 12th dart. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, his average is plummeting. Yeah, he's down to 117 now. Terrible. 60. That paints that picture Greg of that record average 170. of 118 plus, doesn't it? Well, 170 would keep him up there. 98. Still an excellent leg, and he is going to get a look at the 72. Well, remember the highest average in this venue was hit earlier this morning, 111. 0.48 by Daniel Closer. That certainly could be under threat. If this 72 goes, then 60. we will keep an eye 72. on the average. Treble 16 will be the first port of call. Now another single to leave tops for 3-0. Game shot and he the gets third it. Play. Greg Ritchie. So this is where we are. 112.72 after play. Get smart to throw first. three legs of darts. Game on. More than a point ahead of that record average in the venue that was hit just an hour ago. Do you want to hear something kind of silly? Yes, please. 125. Greg Ritchie's never averaged over 100 in all the time he's come here. 98.56 is his best. 60. Well, I is... wouldn't put the pressure on him to get some sort of venue record or anything like that, but... I'd like to see him get his first three-figure winning average. Well, That's something that Ryan Murray did earlier this 95. week. 95. Well, let me tell you something else. He's only averaged over 104 times anywhere else. And his highest ever average, his PB, is 102.7. That was against David Evans 99. at Q School in 2020. What's he going to have to do to get a PB average here? Probably a 14 daughter. He might have to stick in a... Big score here and a very good approach. He, 41. He played a match on a Challenge Tour earlier this year, Greg Ritchie, against Jordan Boyce. He averaged 63.81. Here's that big score. 140. But it just goes to show, doesn't it, the, the level of ability that is there, but is seldom found. I'm just going to leave that average up there because... Still a chance 60. for the record from earlier to be broken. Certainly every chance that his own personal best will go. Another. 
96. That's all right. Looking for a 15 dart at 106. He's not going to break the 110 barrier if he hits it. So it's all about a personal best. And McGinney can do Greg very McCoy little about 106. it. So for his first three-figure average at the Super Series and the best he's ever hit anywhere, anytime. 86. Mark, you require 80. Well, this would give Greg a fresh opportunity for another 11 data. <laughs> but wins aren't guaranteed, are they? Greg's got to find the double. 40. Magini misses his chance. Greg, you require 20. His first chance at a double in the whole match. Double 10. Game, shots, and the match. And there it is. Greg 107.36 in the end. It is a personal best and he's smashed his previous best by some five points there with that display. Greg Ritchie, a 4-0 win, emphatic it was, 33 points better off in the average department than Mark McGeady, who could not do a thing. He only had one dart double. Greg Ritchie only missed one dart double and had back-to-back -back 11 darters to start that game. Another stunning display today. I think the players are peaking here on Wednesday at the Super Series, and one player who maybe had already picked Daniel Closer, will take on Greg Ritchie in a couple of games' time. But Mark McGinney will be back to face Peter Jakes, and next, it's Brian Murray against Rob Collins. Hello and welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we have just seen one of the best performances ever here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Greg Ritchie with a 4-0 victory over Mark Magini in that one. And just look at the average from Greg Ritchie. 102.7 was his previous highest average ever. He's just blown that out of the water. All components of his game coming together and the players entering this week's competition in Group B will certainly not want to face Ritchie in that form. 80% success on the outer ring in that one. And we can see what that does to the league standings. 
and it is Greg Ritchie, of course, in second place on 14 points. And he, of course, has that superior leg difference as well, that 4-0 victory really helping out in that one. He did have back-to-back -back 11 dart legs in that last match as well, which helped him on his way to that victory. Next up, we've got a really big clash, Murray against Collins in the fight to book a place in Group B. Of course, it's a really, really important match for both of these players. Collins has been really impressive in his last two matches. He's looking for his third successive victory. Murray looking for his second win of the day, looking to bounce back from that defeat in his last match. Can he do that? Who will get closer to booking their place in Group B? Let's find out with the guys in commentary. Very good, Abby, who will get closer. Well, no one will catch him. But it is all about, as you rightly say, those second and third spots are extremely coveted and extremely hard fought now because this race really is on. Greg Ritchie, Ryan Murray, Rob Collins, Mark McGinney and Peter Jakes all still in contention to make it through to the evening sessions tomorrow and Friday. And Collins could move into those spots provisionally now. He's on the same points as Ryan Murray. And could go into third place if he beats him here on 14, along with Richie, who just got his first win of the day, remarkably, with that stunning display, 4-0. First leg, it's Ryan to throw first. Game now, on. it is looking much more difficult for McGeady and Jakes because they're going to be Four points adrift of third, whatever happens in this game with two games left to play. Hey, we Full were talking spot. about the start of the day, Paul, uh, at the, the YouTube show that we do about 15 minutes before play gets underway. And I have to say, you did say Richie 60. and Murray were the men that you thought would make it. And if Murray wins here, then that is looking like the most likely outcome. Yes, it is at this stage. And of course, McGinney and Jakes will play each other Full in the spot. next match. And with both of those guys on 10, at least one of them is going to be out of the running after match 11. But Murray and Collins could do themselves a big, big favour. But if it's going to be going to the wire, it's going to be potentially on match 14. It could be Greg Ritchie and Rob Collins having a battle for second spot. And it's not so much about whether you're second or third, it, you just Six have to be eight. one of them. In relation to getting into Saturday night, positioning's about whether you're second in Group B or third in Group B. But as far as getting through Six Group A into another qualifying group, you just have to get there. It's not about second or third. One hundred. Whoever wins this match is going to be in... It's a strange description because it's for third place but pole position i'm gonna call it does that add a little Falsify. bit of spice to the game yeah i think it does actually and i think any game involving rob collins has got a 60 little bit of spice. you require 170. He's got to be careful here, Ryan Murray. 66. He could have been in a position there where he was on a finish before he threw the three darts and ended up not on one. As it is, he's worked his way down to a, a very makeable one. One thing you would hate if you had eyes in the back of your head Ryan, is playing Rob Collins. <laughs> honestly, he's just a walking animation. The hair would be up there as well, wouldn't it? Things to hate 64. if you had eyes in the back of your head. Rob, you require 45. Good point. Now, Collins is surely going for a five here. Just about. Not for the first time today. A dart on the floor. Game shot. And not the for the first, first time today. A dart Rob in the Collins. double. And Collins takes the lead with a lovely break of throw. Second leg. It's Rob to throw first. Game on. It's almost more exciting, isn't it? The Quest 59. for the top three, then the top spot. Closer will not want to leave us with a couple more defeats. He's got Greg Ritchie next in game 12. 87. And then Peter Jakes in match 15. 
he'd like to get to 24 points. But yeah. Henry, over the last couple of days, we had a, a little discussion on Monday morning to see what the points total would be for the winner. He said 18. He thought this group was going to really bunch up. He wasn't that wrong at the start, but I said 20. So I'm kind of hoping that Mr. Closer actually stumbles so that I'm right. At the start of the day, you thought you had no chance, and suddenly it's looking like a real prospect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he will be in the curtain closer at the end 90. of the afternoon action when he takes on Peter Jakes. Rob Collins is producing some good stuff here. Does he go for two tops, even though he doesn't have to? Decided against it in 90. the end to well, leave been, it. There have been a few finishes this week already where people have gone for two double tops when they shouldn't have. And right there, Rob got it absolutely right. 96. Rob, Don't go for two double tops 40. because it just has a lot of peril attached to it. Well, they need one now. Double 10. Can it bail him out again? Bounce off the barrel. Game shot on the well, second leg. Clear of that dark. Rob Collins. Does use these sort of bulbous barrels, doesn't he, Rob Collins? So you can miss by a, a greater Third margin on doubles and still first. use them. Game on. The ideal guide for Rob on double 10 is probably about a centimetre right of the bed. 100. Probably the same for Ryan as well with those 28 gram barrels. If he's right on the wire with the point, he's going to be covering some of the bed. 60. And you have to understand the angle of attack as well. Eighty-three. Yeah, some doubles are better for some players than, than others because of the way their darts land. We talk a lot about how they position themselves in terms of vertically in the board, the angle, the vertical angle, but some players have 96. darts that lean right, some have darts that lean left. You're not talking about politics, are you? Well, I think we've seen already with some of the angles that we have 60. at our disposal that both of these guys are delivering darts which go in very straight, which is the ideal angle. But as far as upright, maybe nobody in world darts right now gets them to stand to attention the way that Ryan Murray does. They're possibly Rod Harrington-esque. 97. Ryan, yeah, you require really 82. Double top with the treble. Yeah, treble three. <laughs> well, no blockage here. 42. And still likely to get a leg in the ledger with Collins' outside finishing range. 100. We've only had Ryan one 4 0 40. all day. And that was in the last match. In a very tightly contested day. Game double 10 is getting leg. a lot of attention. Ryan Murray. Three legs, three double tens. This time it's over to Rob to keep that trend going. Fourth leg, it's Rob to throw first. Game on. Murray did win his match earlier against Greg Ritchie, but 2 4 1 defeats that incredible game against Daniel Closer 85. in his opener. And then a 4 1 thrashing at the hands of Peter Jakes. As for Rob Collins, he went down 4-2 to Mark McGinney in his first match. Won 4-2 against Jake in his second. And then inflicted that second defeat on closer. 125. Just looking at this lineup, who who did you fancy to come through 45. Group A this week? Because when I looked at the lineup on Sunday night. I didn't have a favourite. Do you know what? I'll be totally honest. My favourite was Peter Jakes, who currently sits at the bottom of the table. Yeah, a lot of people went for Peter, including the bookmakers. They had him as the favourite. And when we saw Peter at the bottom of the table on Monday, we were all thinking, 130 this is so open. Rob, you require 160. Another in there. To leave his favourite double. Game Fabulous the finish line. from Rob Collins. Rob Collins. And it gets the greeting that it merited from the animated Arrowsmith that is Fifth the leg. man it's of Ryan steel, Rob first. Collins. Do you know Game what? On. Some of his facial expressions were brilliant in a comic book. Go on. 
he should invent some sound oh, effects to go with his 40. facial expressions. Incredibly passionate about playing this game. There's nothing wrong with that. One hundred and forty. Yeah, and it is natural, isn't it, for Rob Collins? It's not a a put on thing. It is part of him. The fact that he does it. Fifty five. Whether we're in a room in Southampton and on a stage in front of no crowd, or gives it the big licks in front of a crowd on a Saturday night, you can tell it from the way that he walks. Sixty. When he walks around any place, he just has a bounce in his step. He's just a really happy guy playing this game. Ninety-nine. Almost someone that we can all be inspired by because we all get downhearted every now and again. But if you watch a bit of Rob Collins. And he's having a good game. You think, 16. well, here's a guy who doesn't tend to overthink the game and he just loves to be in a battle. We're still in something of a battle here. That 137 gets Murray down to a two darter and looking to close the gap to a single leg. 44. Ryan, you require 70. That is double top with a dart in the 50. way. And that's the reason why maybe a different avenue would be better for Ryan Murray. But if he wants tops, I suppose he has to go for treble 10, doesn't he? 81. Ryan, you require I'm Using 20. treble 14. The double 14 would be a better route for him to try and keep darts from blocking the segments Game that he wants. The but there line. it is, another double Ryan 10. Murray. I suppose if you're looking for red doubles, you've come to the right place because that's five from five. Sick though, gets Rob to throw first. Game on. And it becomes all about this six leg. Collins wins it and it's game over. Murray wins it and he's favourite to take the tie. I have to say, 45. some players have taken the Collins expressive nature the wrong way before. I do remember a little altercation between himself and Roby John Rodriguez at the UK Open. 85. One of the outside boards. I think there's a certain different etiquette that it's expected on the outside boards, isn't there, there, because they're so close together. Although you weren't a great follower of that, no, were you? No, absolutely not. I once got pulled by someone saying that was too much on an outside board at the UK Open. I said, well, you've just trampled on your own statement. It's the UK Open. Any more 60. animated than the asset in full flow in the bad boy old days. I'd like to say there were the days, but 45. my wallet was constantly raided by the Darts Regulation Authority because of who I was when I won, when I lost, or somewhere in between. Rob, go downstairs. One hundred. <laughs> go downstairs, Rob. Honestly. He could have left himself 159, but he was greedy. Well, starting on treble 20 on 299 64. anyway was Robbie probably the wrong call. It is. Completely the wrong question there from Collins, but the answer was right. Oh, boy. To finish 299 79. in six. Ryan, you require 167. <laughs> but he will be back for that double top to topple. Ryan Murray, 97. to leapfrog Rob, his opponent into third 40. place in the Group A table. Game shot. And Collins and claims match. it. Rob a Collins. 4 2 success for the man of steel who moves into the top three and is therefore in a provisional spot for Group B. He defeats Ryan Murray by four legs to two, averaging just shy of 90, a couple of 180s in there as well, and that stunning 160 checkout for Collins, who is third behind Greg Ritchie. Ritchie in action against the first place, Daniel Closer, in a couple of games time. But before that, the bottom two do battle as Mark McGinney faces Peter Jakes.
Hello and welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we've just seen Rob Collins continue his impressive form on day three of Group A. Paul Nicholson, just how impressed have you been with his performances today? He's definitely had motivation today, hasn't he? And Rob has been excellent at finishing, just a, a really solid display. I, I don't think the 89 average does him justice, actually. You look at the high checkout of 160, that equals the best of the week. The doubles have been excellent all over the game. 50% there, and just a really assured display from someone who wasn't shy to tell us how he was feeling about some of those shots. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen his emotions, but we love that side of the players, and we love to see that up on the stage. And it was interesting, you and Murph discussing in commentary, that sometimes players don't take too kindly to that, but we love to see it. He's doing it creatively, but he's not doing it to put opponents off. Some people have done in the past, but he's doing it to the camera, and he's doing any sort of... Uh, stress relieving gesticulation behind the player when they can't see and he's not playing up to a crowd that can influence it so I don't see anything wrong with it whatsoever. And as for Ryan Murray we spoke about him on day one as probably the favourite after day one's play to, to go through it's not now in his hands whether he's in group B or C how are you feeling at this moment in time if you're him? A bit odd considering he's arguably played the best day of the week so far. It's just not gone his way results-wise. But I think it's fair to say that everybody is up their game today. And even Daniel Closer, who's been the best player of the week, he's maintained a really good uh, level of play, but everybody getting better has made him lose points. But you're feeling pretty precarious if you're Muslite Lightyear right now. Most definitely. And we've got Magini up against Jakesy next. How do you see this one going? I've been very impressed with Mark today. I think the way he's picked himself up after the last couple of days has been mightily impressive. I'm not surprised to say it, quite frankly. But I think this could be the game of the day. I'm not just saying it because they're down there, they can probably hear me. But I see signs that this game could go seven legs and it could be really, really good. Maybe not to the 105 to 110 average level, but I'd like to see a mid-90s average game with a couple of key misses in there. And you mentioned it yesterday, actually, because you said that Mark McGinney was just bubbling under the surface, I think you said with him, and you could see the elements were there, just not together. Today, we have seen them all come together at the right time. When someone is missing by large margins, you start to worry, but he hasn't been. He's been missing segments by very small margins. When he can just bring that heat map a little bit closer to that 60 and to the, to the doubles, he can get big improvements in the space of 12 to 16 hours. And that's what we've seen today from him. On the spot then, you can whisper if you want who's coming through this one. Someone from England. <laughs> Once you don't get splinters. <laughs> right then, let's get into this one. Murph, over to you. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, I'll forgive Paul there for not wanting to uh, favour one player over the other. I've been on that balcony and I can hear every word you say. But from the safety of the commentary box, I will press him for a prediction. So don't worry, he will not be getting away with it. But we will know something else at the end of this game because the only thing that's been decided in this group is who wins it. That's been settled since about last Tuesday. Daniel Closer. Now we'll know one player that will definitely be in Group C, the loser of this game, Mark McGinney of Stockport, facing Peter Jakes. It is a, a war of the roses, this one. Yorkshire. First well, leg, actually, it's Mark to against throw Stockport's Cheshire, isn't it? So game on. That's a good start. Paul Nicholson's here to rescue me, but I did promise Abby that I would push you for a prediction now that you're in the safety of the commentary box and can't be heard by the players. Oh. Well, Mark's got the darts, and Mark is undefeated 59. today. So I'm going to go for McGinney. Fair enough. Now, can you imagine if somebody like Mark McGinney has an undefeated day and still doesn't make the top three? That would make him a heavy favourite going into Group C. But let's look at his predicament because McGinney's got two 60. games to go. The best he can do is 14 points. And Greg Ritchie and Rob Collins are already on 14 points. Whoever loses this game is mathematically out of the running for the top three. 60. And we'll be making plans for Thursday morning already. So the first of the final five, this one, I was just saying before Paul came down to join me that it's the second thing that 41. will be settled in this group. 
The first being close as qualification. Group C for one of this pair, probably for both of this pair, but it'll be certain that one of them will be in it at the end of this match. 125. It would make for an interesting Group C if they were both in it. You'd have Latvian Yanis Mustafaevs in there, debutant. Jordan Brooks, debutant. Martin 81. Adams, legend. Martin's former England teammate, Mark McGinney, and Peter Jakes as well, who's got a wealth of experience 100. in different arenas. Try picking out two from that one. Yeah, Martin Adams and Robert Thornton joining the party in Portsmouth tomorrow. Now, don't forget that pair 60. made PT the final 82. of the World Seniors Championship last year, and that event is returning. Tops here for Peter Jakes. Game shot on the first lay. Peter Jakes. Yeah, Dartshop.tv, the place to go. Or seniorsdarts.com for more information. Second leg, Tickets it's available for the first. Circus Tavern, Game and on. that really was a fantastic event to launch. TV darts for the seniors, wasn't it? Yeah, I was there 58. for the first couple of days, and as I was leaving the building, on my way to another work engagement, I saw the Phil Taylor walk on. I'd never seen 55. the Circus Tavern look so big because they'd opened it up a bit. And I could see it from stage left. It was a thing of beauty. I can highly recommend going to the World Scene as it is a, a fabulous spectacle. Yeah, Thornton took two of the three televised titles this year. Taylor reaching two finals, losing one to Robert Thornton, the other to David Cameron. 100. He's going to be at the PDC World Championship this year. So many congratulations to Dave. His homeland's been absolutely throttled by a hurricane recently. I hope that everything in Nova Scotia and up the east coast of North America is okay. Forty-five. Well, if you said that one of the players is producing some of the best darts today and had won the majority of his matches, 59. you would not think it would be Mark McGinney, would you, from what we've seen so far in this one? I spoke to him very briefly on Tuesday, and he was mystified as to why he was... Not playing so well in a couple of his matches, but 60. I think Peter, you require 167. Mark is the kind of player who expects to be at a certain level every game, and when he's not, he asks the question, Hello, 100 would have been the biggest finish of the week. He currently still holds it with 160 alongside Rob Collins now, but Mark's had a very good day so far 4 2 against Collins, 4 3 against Closer. And unfortunately, 100. he did lose. PT required 25. I said he was undefeated earlier. I forgot about that 4-0 drubbing he got at Craig Ritchie's hands. It might have had some sort of effect on him. Aim because he's now 2-0 down. Peter and he's lost six consecutive legs today. I'm sure I did it earlier, didn't I, with the German viewer, Third so I should do the same for first. all those watching Game in on. Yorkshire. Nice greeting. Hey, up. Well, when you said Battle of the Roses, I, I thought you'd let yourself down there. You should have said Battle of the Roses. <laughs> well, it's 100. been won at the moment by the man sporting the white rose. But yeah, it's often mistaken. I know I make that mistake many times. Top points right by Manchester Airport, isn't it? In the county of Cheshire. Yeah, I always remind myself of that by... 41. Saying Tony O'Shea was from Stockport and he played for Cheshire. He didn't play for Lancashire and County Darts. Another player that I'd love to see on the stage here, Tony O'Shea. Did have him at the, the live league as it was then. 100. Great company as well, Tony. Yes, he is. I'm amazed he never got the nickname Tosh. Tony O'Shea. 60. Too busy doing the old chest beating in. Calling himself the Silverback. Still throw a mean dart. Yeah, another player that was involved in that seniors tournament we were talking about. 
It's the same place to go for tickets 96. to the World Seniors as it is for Saturday nights here at the Super Series, dartshop.tv. I think it's a, a darting bucket list for a few people now who have maybe been 45. to the lakeside, been to many of the PDC events, want to to visit something different. Yeah, very much so. And it's not the largest room for good reason because we want the fans to be close to the players. We want you to see what it's like to play on a stage really close up. It's so close that you can actually hear the dart hitting the board. 121. Mark to require 157. There are a couple of big screens either side of the stage, but you might not even need them. No, you don't. 43. Just imagine if you get a ticket and Martin Adams is involved, Robert Thornton. A close-up personal look at what they can possibly do. Now, is McGinney going to break his duck in this match 92. and break a Mark streak of six consecutive legs lost? They won his first couple of matches, but then lost out to that brilliant display by Greg Ritchie. And the first dart meant that he couldn't finish. 92. Peter, you require 142. He's going to get a look at double 11. 44. Mark, you require 22. If he decides to go straight for it, which he is... And that's Game why I'm shown the third line. You bring up a really Mama good Gini. point there, Murph, actually. Because on things like double 13, double 7, double 9, Hopefully it's piece to throw first. Most Game players on. will entertain the option of splitting down and leaving something of an 96. even numbered nature. But you never see people split 11s. Yeah, which is a strange one for me because. You've got that option, which you have for other checkouts as well, of going that six or ten segment and leaving a, a decent double. In fact, Mark McGeady himself employed that on 38 earlier today. Yeah, it's true. But one of the reasons why people like double 11 is because it's the exact mirror image of double six. It's all about getting the line right. It's, from a feel perspective, a nice double to go for because if you get the line, everything's good. You can get the weight of the dart wrong. I mean, you don't see 100. many people who dislike double six for that very reason, but because double 11 is odd, it has this extra mystique to it. They've got a double start World Grand Prix is on at the moment. And we do see some players actually going for double 11, double 14, hedging the bets a little bit. Yeah, Danny Knopper did it. Chris Dorby's done it. After going for double 16, of course, the 14 and 11 option is mainly used as PT a plan B. Yeah. Although, I think one year Simon Whitlock was going for double 13 to open. I think Simon's gone for every double <laughs> to start a leg in the World Grand Prix. I know Raymond van Barneveld once went for the bull. 41. Mark to require 161. 161. On offer for Magini. It's not going to go, but 119 is not the easiest of outs. 134. Peter, you require you 119. You see people leaving 27 very often. You might not get a look at it. Ooh, you were saying about double 13. 93. Good try. Mark, you require 27. Well, I'm not sure McGinney intended to leave this. Some players have started doing this a bit more now, just following a treble in, thinking, look, I'm going to get two darts at double anyway. Why not? But McGinney's reaction suggested to me that he'd miscounted there. 17. You can't find the double. Peter, you require I thought you were going to say he should have got for one double 13. Well, he needs one double Game 13 and he gets lay. it. Peter and Jakes. 3 1 to Peter Jakes. Miraculously. After what's been an Fifth improved day for Gladiator, first. Game on. he could be confined to Group C first if he loses one of the next. You legs. Yeah, just three darts at double, two of them missed at double ten in that 21. previous leg. Peter Jakes, this has been the story for him, hasn't it? In the games when he's finished well, he's won. 
he's probably been in the position to win all of his games because if you look at the games that he's lost, the one earlier today in this group was against Rob Collins. 48. And he did have 11 darts at double in that game. Yeah, it wasn't the best doubling performance by either player, but they did get 25 darts at double between them. 86. Yeah, when he's, so his scoring has been remaining consistent that fluctuating in his performance seems to be the bit at the end. It brings up an interesting question, Murph, because at, at which point or how many doubles would you expect to get a shot at in best of seven 81. without looking at the complexity of the match and expect to win it? I would say 10 or 11. If you're not winning a match after having that many shots at double, it's your own fault. Now, most of the time you want to dispose of a match in 40%. So 10 is the right number. And in that match when we mentioned Jake's had 11 darts at double, he actually only, only won two 42. legs. 42. PT require 150. This match, he's been fine in that department, and this would be a fine way to finish. Likelihood is he's still going to win. 78. And that makes the next visit just a little bit easier. This has been a good display from Peter. Doubles are excellent. Scoring is fine. No 180s, but Mark hasn't got any either. I'm just looking like he's starting to struggle a little bit here, Mark McGinney. I don't know if he's had the... 45. PT requires Confidence 72. knocked out of him after that 4-0 thrashing at the hands of Richie after a decent start to the day. But it's tops for Jakes to complete a 4-1 win. There's not much that McGinney can do from 2-6-4. So he may have that sinking feeling of another defeat coming his way after starting with two victories. Only one match to 100. go, and that is Ryan Murray in PC match 13. But 20. JXC4, a 4-1 win to keep himself in the running for the top three. He needs this one. Seen him do this a few times as well. Block himself out a little bit. No score. Mark to require 164. Well, this would be the ultimate act of robbery. If McGinney were to take that out, hasn't. Jakes will return. 60. PT required 20. Second down and 20. Can he complete? Again, he's muttering to himself. He doesn't like the lie of that dart. Game but this time he's able to use it. And it is Peter a 4-1 win for Peter Jakes. Mark McGinney not looking like a, a happy chappy at the end of that one. It had started well for him today, but it has gone wrong in the last couple of games. He's won one of his last eight legs, and it means that he will be in Group C. Peter Jakes remains in contention for a place in Group B. But coming next it is a battle between the top two and Greg Ritchie can secure his Group B spot if he can beat Daniel Closer, the top of the table player who's lost his last couple of games. Will it be three on the spin after winning nine in a row? Let's find out after this.
Good afternoon and welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where we've just seen Peter Jakes record his second 4-1 victory over Mark Magini of this week. Mark Magini found himself 2-0 down in that one, meaning he'd lost six successive legs. He tried to battle back, but it's another comprehensive defeat for the Scotsman, having started the day so impressively. We saw him dip, interestingly, around this same stage yesterday, didn't we, putting in a 70-odd average yesterday afternoon as well. So maybe it's a bit of fatigue setting in for the Scotsman again. Jake C with 36% on the outer ring in that one. Neither of them overly convincing in the doubling aspect of the game. We can see what that does to the table. And as Murph mentioned in commentary, that defeat does mean that Mark Magini will battle it out in Group C on Thursday and Friday. Next up, we've got Closer against Richie, two players players who've recorded ton-topping averages today closer, hitting the highest ever at this venue with a 111.48. And Richie with his best ever, a 107.36. So can closer recover from back-to-back -back defeats that he has suffered today? Or can Greg Ritchie continue his remarkable form today to secure a place in Group B? Let's find out in the company of Nico and Murph. Thanks, Abby. Yes, it is a top of the table tungsten tussle. Although Daniel Closer has been sitting pretty at the peak of the pile for quite a long time, looking down on the rest of the field who have started to take the fight to him, losing his last couple of matches in last leg deciders. And if the German loses this one, then it will settle another score in Group A because Greg Ritchie will be in Group B. And he's fresh off the back of that 4-0 battering of Mark McGini, the 27-year-old muscle bruman. First McGini, leg, it's Daniel to throw first. Then Game going on to lose 4-1 to Peter Jakes. And Abby made a great point, Paul, there about McGini seeming to drop his level around this point yesterday as well. Is that something that, that he needs to look at? What he could be doing better to prepare to maintain a high standard throughout the course of one of these days? Yeah, I think it's a very fair point, actually. When you go to constant days of competition, you do start to establish patterns 30. in your performance. And if you just expect to play day in, day out and expect things to come to you, that is the wrong approach. You have to look at what you do in relation to energy levels. 100. Not just when you're here, but prior to as well. That's why a lot of dart players these days are doing things like running or having some sort of fist fitness regimen. Having that little extra gas in the tank can really help you in this kind of format. Now, you don't have to be someone like a Steve Monaghetti, a great marathon runner, to be able to last five games of darts. You just have to peak five times a day. If you look at someone like Robert Thornton, someone like Martin Adams, who are, we're going to see this week, the ability for them to do it is something... 43. That's why they've Daniel got to where they are. 161. So for Mark, if, if he's not showing his best stuff in game four of the day, then maybe he's got to find out why. Yeah, for players who are going to go on and win titles in, in the professional game, etc., you know, you're going to have to learn that habit. This is another advantage of playing in these events. In a normal knockout tournament, you're out, aren't you? And you've lost a game, that's it, done for the 100. day. But if you can Don't get in the habit of 101. playing to a good level throughout the day, then you can take that with you when you do get past the first round, the second round, the third round in Pro Tours, etc. I mean, you've done it yourself. You've won Pro Tour events. You can't afford a game off. No. Especially these days. Look at what the first round brought up in the World Grand Prix. Gary Anderson Daniel versus Michael Van Gerwen. 40. That happens a lot more in Players' Championship events than ever before. It happens a lot more in these kind of events too. You may have to win your game first game of the, the day to keep day. yourself in the running. Daniel Closer. Daniel to his credit this week, has shown really good levels of ability 
Second leg, Throughout. it's Greg to throw first. Now let's look game at his on. first game of the week. He averaged 89.6 and had 57% on doubles. 180. First maximum for Greg comes right there. Throughout Monday, Daniel averaged 86.61. Then it was 90.43. 60. Today, it's been 111.48, obviously, you know, his best performance. 90. Then 92. 85. So by that token, he has not averaged under 90 today. So he is playing better day on day. He's got something, this guy. Yeah, yet today will turn out to have been his worst day in terms of results, whatever happens from here on in. His penultimate match this one against Rich and he will play Peter Jakes in the last match of the day, but he lost one on Monday, none yesterday, 58. two today, despite hitting the record average in this venue that was threatened, actually, by Greg Ritchie a couple of games ago. Ended up at 107.36 when he beat Mark McGinney. Just get the sense that the pair 100. are feeling each other out a little bit at this point. More on it for Greg than there is for closer in terms of what it means for league position. But, of course, Daniel will want to stop this little 134. slide. I'll say one thing that's really in the favour of Greg Ritchie. That's his leg difference. He's at plus five. Rob Collins is minus five. Boy, is that one thing to 100. hang on to. Greg, you require what do I always 44. say? Win big, lose tight. Now, if Greg was to lose here, make sure it's tight. 24. Take your opportunities. Daniel, you Don't give your opponent things like a 104 because he can hit some plus checkouts. We know that now. Well, if he does lose tight, it will put paid to any chance of that record leg difference that you were talking about earlier on with Daniel Closer. I think he would need 80. 4 0, 4 0 now, wouldn't he? Greg, you require 20. Yes, he would. Eight legs without response would get him to plus 31. So Chris Gilliland's record of plus 30 is looking pretty safe at the minute. For the lock and key, if this goes in. No oh. score. Daniel, you're required. Why are why are pants on fire? Well, both players have been on fire at different points so far today. Well, this one hasn't really ignited just yet. Game but shot that will suit Daniel line. Closer just Daniel fine. Closer. He's been the master of winning the mediocre matches so far this week. And he's 2 0 up in this one. I'm not sure you want to give him that as a nickname. <laughs> The master of mediocre. First. <laughs> Game on. Yeah, I think that's something that's been levelled at me before. I prefer to call it the golden mean. 100. I think if he is going to get a better nickname than Dan the Man, then maybe something's going to have to happen to him. It always reminds me of a great story of a young lady I met in Nova Scotia in Canada. 60 by the name of Emily Olford. She's still got one of the best darts nicknames out there. Go Their on. nickname is Off the Wall, which is a tremendous, tremendous name. But it has a story. I first met Emily and her mum, Krista, when I was doing an exhibition with Jeff Smith in Nova Scotia. And we were just about to start playing our match. And she went to get her darts out of the board and it fell on the floor. And we just said, oh, look, it's Emily off the wall, Alford. And it just stuck. It's a great nickname. Yeah, one of the famous stories is the Adrian Lewis one, isn't it? The jackpot nickname. Yours is a, the story behind yours, isn't it? It come from a previous career. I used to work in finance and I used to be part of a darts team called the Assassins and a good pal of mine in New Zealand called me a heck of an asset to the game and next thing you know I was called the asset. 180! You Daniel, you require 170. At the moment. Just put himself back in the picture here. Well, it took 
Daniel Close for a long time to hit a first three-figure finish. He's not going to add the big fish right now, but he would half expect to return. Break to require 142. Might go 17s for this one. Decides not to. Maybe he should have gone to the 17s. So that's a great shot. Daniel, you require 72. Puts the pressure on. Triple 16, the first port of call. And now double 12, which he hit to win leg two. And Game hits again to win leg three. Daniel Precious closer. for players. That record is still on for plus 31. He would need to win the next leg. Fourth leg, it's great to need throw to beat first. Peter Jakes by four legs to nil. And Game you on. spoke about Greg Ritchie's leg difference being plus five. That could end up being plus one at the end of this match. And all of a sudden... There's opportunities for the likes of Jakes and Collins to go ahead of him. And look who Greg's playing in his last game. If there's a big swing in that game, Greg could find himself in Group C. Really interesting climax. Not all just about who wins Group A, even though 100. that is the biggest prize on offer from it. It's been your first look at Daniel Close today, up close, no pun intended. What have you made of him? Yeah, well, do you know what? I was expecting something different to what I got because I spoke to you before the show started, looked at his stats. He'd been very much a man that had maintained a good level of performance without doing anything spectacular. And I think today we have seen spectacular, 41. but that's also coincided with a couple of defeats. Yes, it has. If we'd have categorised him over the first couple of days, it would have been... Someone making very little 29. errors. Not making silly mistakes. Just doing everything the way darts should be done, really. But he has gone up a level today, and I suppose because of what we've seen in that department, it will make him a threat on 60. Saturday night if he can find what he did in Game 3 a fair bit come Saturday. He's got a great chance of qualifying for Champions Week, but I suppose the biggest question... 81. Sitting in the air right now is it's taken him a couple of days to get to that level. He's not going to have that opportunity to do it on Saturday. The next two days are going to be really important for him. Well, let's also not forget that those two defeats that we just mentioned came after he'd already secured qualification for finals. 100. Night. Greg, you require Nothing like something to play for to focus the mind. Richie won't write himself off just yet. Won four legs on the spin in his previous match, didn't he? Yeah, not a bad 56 start jolt as well. Might need a couple of 11s again. But it's three in the treble bed to pile Greg the pressure on. 40. Paul Nicholson said pressure is for tyres at the end of the last leg. But sometimes the pressure 20. can be too much. I'm not taking credit for that, by the way. That's definitely a Chris Daniel Mason line. 20. Well, this is for 4-0 to get to 22 points. Game Wonderfully shot done. And, the match. and after Daniel winning 4-0 in his previous match, Greg Ritchie sees the other side of the coin, and that puts him in huge jeopardy of losing his top three spot. It will all come down to his final match in the group against Rob Collins. That will be match 14, closer with a typically Daniel match. 57% on the doubles, 92.49 the average. He is getting better as the week goes on. That is a fact. So we'll see more of Greg in a bit. We'll see more of Daniel when he plays Peter Jakes in match 15. But before we get there, we will start our final round of matches with Mark McGeady up against Ryan Murray.
Hello and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. As you can see, I'm joined by our first finalist for Saturday night in Daniel Closer. Daniel, congratulations on making it through to Saturday night. Sum up how you're feeling to have qualified. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Yes, I feel pretty good. Yeah, I, uh, yeah I, I have the first place on the table. I have two days or two and a half days off. I guess I will do some sightseeing in London. And then I hope I can uh, have the same results on Saturday night then. And we've seen you perform so consistently over the course of the three days, but your performances today, you've taken them up another level, haven't you? Have we seen the best from you today, especially with that 111 and a half average? Yeah, that's of course the best. Uh, that was my best average, recorded average so far here. Yeah. I can play 90 or 100 plus, that's it's okay, but 110. Yeah, that was really, really a nice match. And playing in these tournaments, they're quite relentless, aren't they? You play a lot of matches in one day. How much can you learn from this experience? Yeah, playing that much. It's not so much matches because in Germany, on the Super, uh, Super League Germany, we are playing uh, seven matches a day with best of 11. So that's really hard. So I'm used to it. Yeah, perfect. And you can tell the way you're playing up there. Yeah. You said you've got a few days off. You're going to go to London, I believe, aren't you? Yeah, yes. I, I guess I will take a bus to London and then check out the Tower Bridge and the Tower of London. Yeah. Very nice. And we've spoken a lot this week about how you don't really show many emotions up on that stage. You just keep very, very focused. On Saturday night, might we see you with a few celebrations up on that stage? Uh, maybe if I win. But only if, <laughs> but, <laughs> but only if I win, no. No, I have uh, still my feelings, but I just don't show them. And just sum up how much you've enjoyed this week and, yeah. and taking part. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed, it I enjoyed it really well. I had a really warm welcome here in Portsmouth, and yeah, I like it here. And of course, you've got one more game to come this afternoon, but yeah. we will be seeing this man in finals night as well. So we move into our final group of matches on day three of Group A. It is, of course, Magini up against Murray in the company of Nico and Murph. Yeah, thanks, Abby. The open top bus for Daniel Closer, but not as a victory parade, just as a paying punter around the sights of London. All right for some, isn't it? The rest of them will have to battle it out in groups B and C tomorrow. Mark McGeaney will definite, definitely be in group C. The gladiator, bottom of the pile now, can only finish on 12 points if he beats Ryan Murray, who's actually the player in fifth place directly above him. And he needs a, a convincing victory, really, and then has to rely on defeat for Rob Collins against Greg Ritchie in the next game as well and also that Peter Jakes doesn't catch whatever he's done so there's an awful lot to happen here for Murray to get himself into Group B uh, but before we get into this one Paul it was nice to hear from Daniel there uh, one of the things that we first are leg, it's smart determined to, to do in this sort of new game look on. phase of the Super Series is to, to bring you a little bit of personality from the players get to know them and uh, it was a really warm interview wasn't it yeah i really enjoyed that actually great questions from abby and it just gives you an insight into what kind of person daniel is i love the fact that he mentioned the german super league because there is one brutal tournament playing seven games of best of 11 in a day 82 that's the equivalent of winning a tournament in pdc darts at the top level that's a lot of darts so for the fact that he said this week i'm used to it there you go you know what you've got to do now if you want to get ready for this? You've got to play a lot of matches. But <laughs> I just love that he didn't give us the typical answer of, oh, I'm going to have a bit of rest. I'm going to practice. I'm going to get ready. No, I'm going to go sightseeing in London. I'll see you guys on Saturday. That's brilliant. So honest. Yeah, and good knowledge as well. From Daniel Closer to get a bus and not a train in the current climate. Magini off like a train here, a maximum in the opening leg. It's not like British trains are anywhere close to being as good as German trains. Again, no politics. Let's sweep that aside. And let's get back on track with the darts. I'll tell you what is really odd. 
about this fixture. There is the possibility that Ryan Murray could finish this table on bottom Mark position. If he loses by a certain margin to Mark McGinney here, and the results go the other way for him in 14 and 15, Murray could start the day on third position and go bottom. Fifty-eight. Mark you require forty. Well, to make that a more likely prospect, McGinney looks at top and shot pins on the first it. Leg. Mark McGinney. McGinney. One of the players to have beaten Daniel Closer today. Ryan Murray Second was on the wrong end of that 111 game on. Super Series record average. That's a record in this new venue here in Portsmouth. But interestingly. Off air, Abby spoke to Daniel and asked him about the games that he lost, and he, he just said well, he didn't do anything wrong himself. It's not like he took his foot off the gas. His opponents just played well. It has been a tale today of people playing better. Falsified. If this had been day one of this group, we would have come into Tuesday thinking, what's possible? And I like 100. the fact that... Some people have set personal bests today because we do grade them on that. What kind of bracket can you find yourself in? And you want to be one of those players who's put in that 110 plus average. Some people would be happy with just over 90. 99. It's going to be a very different atmosphere here on Saturday night. If you are curious as to what it's like, why don't you come on and join us? 60. You can even come down and meet myself and Murph and Mace. One hundred and thirty-nine. You'll be able to get your photo with Muds Lightyear as long as he's here. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting end to the week, particularly because this group has been so close, despite closer. 92. The, the, Ryan, the over five have been so tight, and we know we've got more quality getting added to the field. I tell you what, it'd be really a, a brave man to pick the six players that will be playing Mark at finals now on Saturday. 170. You were wrong about Daniel Close's 113 checkout in the next match. Oh, the 15th match, sorry. Well, it might still happen. It just won't be the first ton-topping checkout that he's managed. 40. Murray wants tops to level this one. Game shot on the second lay. Ryan Sneaks Murray. It in the left. Yeah, that's an ace from Murray. Very good. Third leg, it's smart to throw first. Game on. Not the only famous Murray when it comes to Scottish sport. Andy and Ryan. Do you remember the middle distance runner, Yvonne Murray? 58. She was very good. Can't say I do. You've got a lot of running references today. Have you been I, watching like, some? Yeah, I love athletics. It's one of my favourite things to watch. I get really excited watching a good 1,500 metre race or a 400 metre hurdles. It makes me tired just watching it, Paul, to be honest. I remember 2008 when I got to meet Steve Backley. One of the greatest javelin throws of all time. And I thought, wow. I had a pro, to a, chal a pro challenge, by the way. He was throwing darts. And I thought, these things are a bit smaller than you used to throw. And there is a big lad. Yeah, he was throwing them from the back of the venue. <laughs> I can't imagine somebody throwing a projectile over 60. 85 meters. Incredible. Are we going to go down the... A segue of Olympic-themed darts players. We had the hammer here, didn't we, a couple of weeks ago? 100. You got any more? No, I think I'm for the high jump now. I mean, I could really, really produce a tenuous one and just say, Jim McEwen. <laughs> we did have Jim Williams last year, but he's had a... Good PDC Pro Tour season, hasn't he? Picking up a win. 58. And you don't know what this could possibly do for somebody as a springboard. 
for next season because qualifying school is going to take place in Milton Keynes in January. I'm sure a lot of the players who've taken part in Super Series darts throughout the course of the year Ryan will go to qualifying school again. And if they don't get through, we would welcome them back here with open arms. Give them another chance for success. 82. Well, Mark unlucky there. Murray going the wrong side of the dart already in the treble 20. So it's an opportunity for Magini. 57 would leave the button. 55. Ryan, you require 78. I'm sure he had this in the last leg, didn't he? Different result. 58. Oh, that's a 28 gram barrel in the way. It never helps. Yeah, standing up. 3 block blocker, the opposite problem. Or well, the opposite of the problem, should I say, for Mark Magini. Look at that. You can't even 52. see the first dart in the shot. Ryan, you require 20. It was laying down that much. Game shot on the third leg. But Murray edges Ryan ahead. Murray. You could say advantage Murray. You could say. A Fourth break. leg, it's Ryan to throw first. To Murray. Game on. So many bits of terminology are shared in sport. But then again, the way that match play darts, which is what this is, it's very similar to a tennis set, isn't it? Especially when you play best of 11, you get a lot of the same scores in, in darts as you do in a tennis set. 6-4, six, 6-5, six, 6-3. Six, 100. It's another... Um, well, you never get 6-5, do you? Another potential format, isn't it? Set play. I really, really enjoyed the... Uh, Short format set play at the Masters. The Seniors Masters, that is. So would you, by that token, want to see the Super Series employ best of three sets? 60. Best of three sets, but... best Yeah, best of three in sets and best of three overall. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be fun. 38. Because what happens is every single leg becomes... Massively significant. It'd make like difference a bit different, wouldn't it? One hundred and four. I think our right hand man Mark Walker has got enough on his plate right now. Yeah, no, I, was, I was waiting for the text coming through. Just well, just to make you aware, Mark, we might need that super series abacus after all by the end of the day to see who goes through. Into group B and into group C. Greg Ritchie is hanging on to second spot on the table by the skin of his teeth. 95. Ryan, you require 164. Even if Murray does win this match, I don't think he's going to make it. Well, this is the last game, isn't it, for this 79. pair? 79. So the best you that Murray can manage. In fact, I might as well wait until the end of this leg to, to talk you through those combos because the leg could still end in this visit. Not now. 43. Ryan, you require 85. Does it finish here? 37. Way off the mark. Mark, you require 63. Couple of choices here. 13s or 17s. Still two more choices. Ten or a six, or even the 14 if he so wishes. Tops again. 23. And a very good try. Ryan, you require 48. And if you're Murray and you like tops, this is a good shot. Now he doesn't have a dart in the way. Game and it makes all the, the difference. Leg. Not having Ryan that Murray. obstacle between yourself and the target. 3-1. To Ryan. So if he Fifth wins leg, the next leg, throw first. Ryan Murray, Game on. he'll move on to 14 points, the same as Greg Ritchie and Rob Collins. His leg difference would be minus four, which would put him one leg ahead of Collins. So he'd then need 85. Ritchie to beat Collins in the next match, but hope that Peter Jakes doesn't beat Daniel Closer in the last match. What you're seeing in a nutshell is it's still pretty complicated. Yeah, he could be moving 95. up and down without even playing. 
Ryan Murray in both of the next couple of games. It's like being asleep on a ferry then. But this, you're not in control, but you're going up and down. But what he can control is trying to get it done as healthily as possible. Because if he loses this leg and then 100. wins on throw, that means his leg difference will be minus five, the same as Rob Collins. And that could make all the difference come the end of the day. Yeah, do yourself a favour, Ryan, and win this leg. 140. It comes into play, doesn't it, that leg difference so often at the Super Series. Players can't be separated, of course. We did have on finals night. A couple of weeks ago, that first ever televised three-way nine-dart shootout. The 180 from Ryan Finesse, perhaps one of the best 180s you'll see. And remarkably, 59. hadn't hit one that night before that nine-dart shootout. Yeah, outrageous. The one thing I'll always remember about that nine-dart shootout is just how excited Conan Whitehead was. I went into the practice room and read the rules to the players, and he was in the corner just jumping up and down 44. thinking, this is so exciting, this is so exciting. Yeah, easy to, be, easy to be excited to watch. I'm not sure you'd have the same level if you were in it. No, he doesn't. 60. He doesn't really care. He's in Champions Week. He's the one who beat Ryan Finesse in the final. Well, we've done the track and field references and the, the tennis court stuff. Now we've got the opportunity. 55. For some snooker. Ryan, you require 147. A 147 break to win the match. Ah, the snooks. Three for the green. 80. Oh, and he missed Mark the colours. require 119. Can McGee make this clearance? Well, he's got to go the 12 segment, surely. Has to. Can he hit the ball? 94. That was a better effort. Ryan, but Murray, if he likes 67. tops, he's got the option here of treble nine, but he's going to go 17s anyway. And it's two at double eight to win by four legs to one. And that, believe it or not, is a very good guide for him. Game And he shot. uses it. And the match. Ryan McGinney Murray. McGinney loses it and will finish bottom of the Group A table. Ryan Murray now sits in third place in the provisional spot to make it into Group B after that 4-1 thumping of Mark McGeaney, but both Rob Collins and Peter Jakes have the opportunity to catch him. Jakes won't be able to do that if Collins wins the next match, but it is a difficult one for Rob Collins. He's up against second place, Greg Ritchie. We know that Daniel Closer has already won the group, but the race to make it to Group B is well and truly on with a couple of games left today. Don't go anywhere.
Good afternoon and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here in Portsmouth where we've just seen Ryan Murray complete his day in Group A with a 4-1 victory over Mark McGinney, an average just in excess of 82 for him. He now has a nervous wait to see whether he'll be returning tomorrow morning in Group C or tomorrow evening in Group B. 50% checkout success for him in that one. He had the highest checkout of 67 Mark McGinney, he already knew, of course, that he was going to be returning in Group C tomorrow, so very little for him to play for in that match. And we can have a look at what that does to the league table with two games remaining in Group A, of course. Confirmation that Daniel Closer finishes top of the group, our first player through two finals night. Mark McGinney finishes bottom on 10 points. So it is, of course, all still to play for in terms of positioning for groups B and C. We've got Richie against Collins up next. If Collins wins, it means Peter Jakes will join Mark McGinney in group C. Collins looking to win his fourth successive match. It's been a really strong day for him. And we've really, we weren't really speaking about him a great deal coming into today's action, were we? But we're certainly speaking about him at the end of it. So let's get into this one then, our penultimate game of the day in the company of, I was going to call you Henry there, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that, of Nico and Murph. Thank you very much, Abby. Get out, Henry. Yes, I am back. Henry got all excited there. Just uh, tried to wrestle the microphone off me, but the time has come to start talking about permutations as happens towards the end of days. So heads gone emoji. An explosion coming up because all sorts of things can still happen, despite the fact that for a long time this group has been settled in terms of who will top the table. Daniel Closer has held that honour for seemingly ever. But Greg Ritchie. First leg, it's Greg to throw and first. And Rob Collins. Game on. Both in a position where they can confirm their spots in Group B. Now, there is an outcome that can put them both in Group B. A 4-2 win for Collins in this one would see them both finish in 100. Group B. Any win for Richie would see him through. Any win for Collins would see him through. And that would be at the expense of Ryan Murray. If Richie wins, Murray stays in third place and Collins ends up in Group C. And trying to do the sums, I still think there might be a very small chance for Peter Jakes, depending on the margin of victory here. 85. If Greg Ritchie wins over Collins, because he is only minus... He's only one leg behind Ryan Murray, currently in third place. So still Easy plenty five. to work out. But we do know that the top and bottom is settled. Closer wins. McGinney finishes bottom. Is that about right, Paul? It sounds about right. I think the easiest thing to do is to see what happens in game 14. See how the chips fall. And then we'll know exactly who's where come match 15. But you can tell by the intensity of the faces one. of these players that they desperately want to get this last win of the group to make sure they're playing tomorrow night. Not only because it would be three qualifiers from five players 91. in Group B as opposed to C, which is only two, but that glorious lie-in on a Thursday morning where they can just take it easy and maybe get to the venue 43. for a round... 7.30 at night as opposed to 7.30 in the morning. Thursday morning lion. What's that? I haven't got a clue. 54. I'm up with the rats these days. Every single day of the week. It's a bit rude on whoever you're rooming with. 90. Greg, you require 56. Well, 56 for Greg Ritchie. To take another step towards Group B. And only needs two legs to get there, remember. 36. By the way, I Rob, thought you were very rude saying permutations when Rob's got no hair. He's never had a perm. Can you imagine him with a perm? <laughs> Double 11. 80. Oh, very good try. Greg, you require 20. 
D10. D5. Oh, did not want S5. 16. Robbie requires no, Collins will return. Nobody ever splits double 11. We've yeah, worked that out, the and that's line. the reason why. Rob Collins. And didn't he like it? Do you really like it? Is it, is it weird, kid? It's Rob to throw He's first. loving it, loving it, Game loving on. it. Lost for words. See what happens when you turn up. One oh, beautiful 180 from Rob. I was wearing a dart shirt earlier in the week with three darts on the back, and they were very vivid. 99. In a sort of pyramid pattern where the points were almost glued together. That's exactly what it was like in that 180 visit. This shirt's more of a... 81. Evil Spider-Man look, isn't it? Yeah, it's like they forgot to add the colour. You ever seen that movie? What's it called? Pleasantville. 59. I can't say it. Everything's in colour, and then there are some people in black and white. It's almost as if his shirt's in black and white and the rest's in colour. Well, it's a perfect start here for Rob Collins in this quest to make it into Group B. There is still remarkably a scenario where Greg Ritchie misses 43. out. Robbie require 100. He's had a, one of the few, one of the two players to have had a positive leg difference all day. He might end up with a minus. Game if he's shot minus two in leg. this match. Rob Collins. Facial expression Third United. It's great to throw first. Game on. He's had plenty of them today. He's very hard to categorise sometimes. Yeah, it's, do you think, is he the most expressive darts player? He's Eight up there two. with Michael and his pomp. Yeah. My favourite Michael Van Gogh expression was when Luke Humphreys suggested that he'd made a noise behind him or something. It's, one of the, it's been made into a gif many different things. It, brilliant, brilliant moment. You see that one where he, he sort of marched to it? He, he sort of had a little half argument with Humphreys and then was like right I'm going to hit this and really march towards the board really pumped up oh that's right I remember that one that was Hulk mode yeah 60 although Mervyn King will always be my favourite in that department what the over the shoulder what's wrong with you gif yeah well, what's wrong here 96 for Greg Ritchie is that in the space of about half an hour, everything could go from looking very, very right to very, very wrong. If he loses this 100. match 4-0, he goes on to minus three in leg difference. Every player, apart from the group winner, would be on a negative leg difference. 168! At that point. And Peter Jakes is on minus five, so would need to win by a couple of legs, three legs to be certain 81. of leapfrogging Greg, him. Greg, you require 100. Nicking that spot. I don't think I've ever seen that. Five players on a negative leg difference. And let's not forget the fact that Daniel Closer has still got the opportunity of breaking the leg difference 60. record if he wins 4-0 against Peter Jakes. Eighty-three. Greg, you require to make it less likely for Jake's and more likely for himself. Richie looks at tops. That's a a nervy dart, a real pull, and he's looking. He doesn't want to go for double five. That was a tell, wasn't it? He's going to have to go for it. Tells me he's going to hit it. Game shot on the third lay. Greg Richie. <laughs> look at Rob Collins. <laughs> All you can do is sit and laugh. Right, get Rob Collins in this replay, please. Full play, it's Rob to throw <laughs> first. He's like an angry frog in a sock. He's like a gremlin in a crate. 60. He's just an ultra competitive guy, isn't he? Wants nice. to win every leg he plays. The many faces of Rob Collins. 57. That's the title of his biography, sorted. It was so much easier to play him when it was online and you can only hear him. 
Because he doesn't make a noise. 134. Yeah, the master of the the silent roar, if you like. But Richie now needs one more leg to secure a spot 54. in Group B. Remember, a 4-2 win for Collins would see them both seal second and third place. Could not then be caught by Peter Jakes. Ryan Murray wants Richie to go the whole way and win this match. Because he would then stay in third ahead of Collins and hope that closer does the job for him 60. against Jakes. Rob, you require Rob never does anything the easy way, that's for sure. He's looking for his best performance this year when it comes to Super Series darts and what was known as the Live League. This is a much better fourth leg from him. He's on a double after 12. 46. Rob, you required 28. Right, makes the next leg massive if Game this goes shot in. The and it does. Rob if Collins. Collins wins this leg, Greg Ritchie is not safe. If Fifth Ritchie leg, wins it, to throw first. he's definitely Game in up. Group B rather than Group C. And the advantage, as we know, you've got more chance of making it through than not making it through. Because three from five go through from group B and 43. only two from six in group C. I haven't seen anybody get this revved up since Alex Roy played Phil Taylor. And he was walking around on the stage waiting for him like a boxer in the ring. Didn't work. Taylor did the number on him. 96. I've just... I had a little glance at the stats in the game as well, and Richie really hasn't turned up, has he? No, he hasn't. Averaging 70. Collins. 140. 99. And threatening to post a three-figure return. 60. But that's a, a typical visit for Greg in this match. He's been hitting the wires of that treble 20 on the wrong side. 60. Well, there's still a chance. Still a chance. In this leg, a leg, remember, that Richie needs. Otherwise, he's looking over his shoulder. 82. Yeah, he's having Rocket an Aerosmith game here. He's going to be living on the edge. 61. What could the facial expression of Rob Collins be if he hits that double 12? So if he hits it, he's in Group B, and Greg Ritchie is not 140. safe. 140. Rob, you require 24. Do the raw, Rob. Game, shots, and the match. Oh, and he does absolutely nothing. Thanks for your help, Rob. But well done to you. A really well-timed run to the top three. Greg did not find his optimum stuff in that match. In fact, he found his personal best today. But that was one of his worst performances in his Super Series career. But for Rob Collins, that is his best performance this year. Brilliant from him. So, as far as the top three is concerned, we will nail it all down when it comes to match 15, which is next with Peter Jakes taking on Daniel Closer. Peter would need to win 4-0. 4-1 for Peter gets Greg in B by two legs one. So, it's going to have to be perfect from Peter after the break.
Hello and welcome back to the Moda Super Series. We've got one game remaining in Group A and there is a significant amount on the line in it. We've just seen Rob Collins come through 4-1 against Greg Ritchie to book his place in Group B. A superb win for him, his fourth of the day, given everything at stake in that one. It's fair to say Collins rose to the occasion, closing out the match with a 13-dart leg there to win it. 4-1, an average just shy of a ton. It was his best performance of the day by a mile. A hundred checkout was the best in the game. As you can see there, Richie, we've talked a lot about his doubling all week, really, but just 14% on the outer ring, one out of seven on the doubles, double tops, his highest checkout of the day of the game we can have a look then at the table heading into this final match and just have a little look at how things are looking heading into that as i said rob collins has booked his place in group b but there's now a nervous wait for the likes of greg ritchie and ryan murray in this one peter jakes needs to win by four legs to nil to make it through to Group B. As you can see there, the lads in commentary mentioned that everyone aside from Daniel Closer is on a minus leg difference coming into this one. Remarkable. We've never seen anything like that before. Daniel Closer could end the day on 24 points. So let's head into this one and see whether Peter Jakes can remarkably turn things around and book his place in Group B or whether Daniel Closer will extend his lead at the top in the company of the lads in the commentary box. Thanks, Abby. Yes, it is all about 4-0 this match because the 4-0 scoreline either way could make a couple of things happen. It would be the result that Peter Jakes needs to usurp Greg Ritchie and book his place in Group B at his expense or... For closer, it would be the scoreline that saw him break that record, the best ever leg difference at the Super Series. So a, a whitewash win, the order of the day for both players for very different reasons. You would think that the most likely one to get it is the man finishing his practice darts now, but it is. First leg, gets piece to throw first. Game on. A result. If it's Jakes that gets it, that Greg Ritchie doesn't want. A man who's been sitting pretty in a provisional spot for Group B all day long and suddenly could lose it at the end. 93. Well, you could see that those two things are all hanging on this leg. Absolutely, yeah. The first leg could be the most important one. And the leg that he won against Rob Collins could prove to be very important as well. 140. A great display from Rob to book his place in Group B. He will be in action tomorrow evening, 10 p.m. Group B gets underway live on Sporty Stuff TV. Featuring Robert Thornton, Ryan Palmer and Stephen Burton as well, along with either Peter Jakes or more likely 82. Greg Ritchie. And then Group C... Well, that gets underway at the same time as you've been watching the Group A action featuring Mark McGinney, 95. Ryan Murray, probably Peter Jakes, Martin Adams, Jordan Brooks, and Yanis Mustafayevs. 10 out of 10. Oh, 100. Superb. Nailed it. I actually got a tweet from Yanis a couple of days ago. He said... The first person in the commentary box has actually said my name right. One hundred and twenty-three. So I've just gone from there. <laughs> really looking forward to meeting him, actually. I'm quite friendly with Maraz Razma, who's going to be feeling pretty good today because he took out Ryan Searle yesterday in the Grand Prix, making the last 16. 97. Peter, you so require Latvian darts has never been in a better place. Right, we need a, a practice room camera now on Greg Ritchie. It will be relief at the moment because Jakes can't go out and he'll be cheering on Daniel Closer for this 82 break that would secure his spot in Group B. Daniel, you require 82. Wow, what a shot. Double 16. And what a guide. 50. Peter, Peter you require 24. lives still. Plot thickens. 
Game shot on the first leg. A twist. Piece of Jakes. May still be ahead. So the first thing's been sorted out. Chris Gilliland's record of plus 30 Second in leg, leg difference Daniel in Group A. First. Game on. At worst, it can be equaled. So his name will still sit at the top of the tree. Yeah, I may have actually inadvertently attributed a record to 100. Daniel Closer earlier today with that 111. 0.48 average, just I might have slipped up and said it was the highest at the venue. It wasn't, of course. We saw Connor Heenahan with 58. a 115 plus average on that amazing night. Remember as well, he, that was the week when Heenahan was leading Group A. Let it slip, and thank goodness he did because he hit a nine darter and then hit that 115 checkout in Group B. 100. Yeah, imagine if he'd won Group A, we might not have got that nine darter this week or that week. And he might have the, the highest average at this 100. venue, Daniel Closer. Now, Group A has been owned by the Germans over the last couple of weeks. wonder who's going to own Group A next week. We'll let you know who's playing in Group A on Saturday night. You're going to have to 95. wait. 95. You're playing pretty soon, aren't you? You've revealed that already. I haven't told people 140. when, though. Okay. We'll leave it at pretty soon, then. Mace has already let slip that he's playing in Group A next week. Suddenly, I'm looking forward to commentating even more. 100. GX is hanging by a thread here. Yeah, it really has been trotting across the tungsten tightrope. 100. Throughout the day, Daniel, Peter you Jakes. Can you trot on a tightrope? <laughs> that would be difficult. Terrier can. Will he stay there? It looks like a good guide, that. No, he's gone the treble 18 back to himself. Double 16. Missed it twice already. 74. Misses it a third time. Peter, you're he's still on that tightrope. Is he on the right rope? He's fallen off. 95. Daniel, He's hoping there's a safety 32. net. Well, the safety net has been that Closer has kept missing double 16. And he's now missed it four times. Game shot on the five. second leg. Daniel Closer. Can fill in the blanks now because Daniel Closer has just won a leg that denies Third Peter Jakes a first. late surge into Group B and saves Greg Ritchie's position in third in the table. Well done, Greg. You're getting a lion tomorrow. 180. Same alarm call tomorrow, Peter. Well, how about signing off the day with something rather special? 140. I presume you're talking about Peter. Well, I was hoping for the best leg that we've ever seen, but Peter Jakes could still produce perfection. Four, five, 140. And that's where it ends. Still a brilliant leg so far. But at which point do we have to start discussing how dangerous Daniel Closer could be at the German Super League, which he mentioned in his interview with Thabby? The winner of that German Super League next month will get a spot at Alexandra Palace. Now, how many people have we had 41. here this year who are going to Ali Pali? Scott Williams? Correct. Any more that you can think of at the top of your head? Uh, yes, definitely. Because I thought of someone the other day and it's just gone. Not at the 57. top of my head or it's... So far, PC require head, 140. Danny Lowby hasn't qualified, has he? Jixie, what are you up to? Game show. Hitting a 140 checkout is what you're up Peter to. J. And he scared the nine data, but he finished it off in 12 with a big out. Not his biggest of the Full week play. either. It's Daniel to throw first. Game on. So, with nothing on the line but pride and the fact that that these guys want to get two more points, we may start seeing some shackles off type darts. 
Lisa Ashton. There you go. Also, oh, like Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber. There. there you go. Yeah, in terms of players that have played this year. I think Lisa Rashford is the only one, although can't reveal it. But I do think four. there are players, or at least one player, that is due to play at the Super Series. We won't say any more names. They'll be revealed on Saturday nights. Yes, there are players playing around the world who can qualify for Ali Pali and may get an invite here. Of course, I me, mean, you and Mace will be there, but it doesn't really count in the same way. <laughs> yeah, we don't count. We just talk about the players. They're the superstars, the real stars of this game. Superstar stuff, this from Peter Jakes. He's averaging in three figures. He's taken out 140. He's hit both of his double attempts in the match, yet it's going to be an ultimate disappointment, even if he wins 4-1. Welcome to the complexities of Super Series Group A 60. action. He's got an interesting calibration, hasn't he? When he puts that dart in front of his face, it almost comes from the right to the left, Daniel same Whitlock style. 157. And he locks that arm out in a certain position before he draws it towards his face and throws it with real ferocity. One hundred and thirty-three. Well, all he can do here is hit and hope. There you see that little lock of the elbow that Paul was referring to. One hundred. Should be Daniel conducive to 24. pretty consistent darts, really, that kind of throwing style. A couple of times this week, he's hit double 12 Game after that. The fourth leg. Seems like it's Daniel a good guy closer. for him. But... One thing I was talking to Henry about the last couple of days is that the action of Daniel Closer reminds Fifth me of leg, Nick Kenny. To throw first. Is Game that on. straightening of the right arm, and then after that, the dart comes towards the dominant eye. Well, just looking at Peter Jake from that side there, his dart never went above eye level. That goes above head level for Daniel Closer. Yeah, it's the old Martin Schindler thing. Still pretty effective. 140. There it is. About nose level to start with. Maybe even lower than that. 96. That's a very good display from Jake. So it looks like he's saving his best for last here. Will it be enough to get the better of closer? And he can still finish fourth. 96. Win that little mini league. Go into Group C as the, the top dog. You could say it's a battle of the soul songs. Peter Jakes is trying to save 100. his best for last, like Vanessa Williams. And Daniel is the Phyllis Nelson. Move closer. Well, nobody has been able to move closer from the top of the table today. And he will have a couple of days off to take in the sights of London. Is he biding his time? 87. Looking to rock Daniel Peter Jakes with an 11 or 12 data. Is it double-double? That was the intention, and you can see there. 54. Well, Peter, get a post-it note between that dart and the double. Double 19. Can he use that? Oh, tricky. Straight through the no goalposts. Score. Daniel, you require Hit the post. 40. 40. Top bins. Game shot on the Back of the net. 3-2 close up with a 13 dart break. And 24 points could be hit. Six there. Gets Daniel to throw first. Game on. And the best he can do with leg difference is plus 29. Only yeah. plus 29. Only plus 31 ahead of the next nearest person. 31 legs.
140. ahead of the next person. Put that into winning margins. It's ridiculous. 96. Yeah, it has been all about Daniel Closer really in this group. An excellent debut at the Super Series for the German, following in the footsteps of Lucas Weinig last week. And we will see him at finals night on Saturday. 18. Daniel on course to win Wednesday's 18. curtain closer. We have done those puns to death. At least we're going to get a couple of days off them to think of some new ones. Yeah, pull yourself together. Ninety-six. That's yeah, not bad. The lead is 115. And the last thing Peter needs is darts on the floor, which is what happened at the end of the last visit. Ninety-nine. One ton plus out in 15 games. One! Everyone else has got at least three. Ninety-seven. No. Honestly, if this happens, Chris Murphy Daniel, you require is mystic. I predicted about three hours ago that Closer had, in the last leg of the day, hit 113 checkout. He's left it. Double top. 93. Oh, oh, that would have been... Peter, you require 86. The best moment of my career, never mind him. That would have been pure insanity. There might be another leg yet. Bullseye. 39. I don't think there's going to be. Daniel, you require so 20. Double 10. The closer to close it out. Game and it shot is delight for Daniel match. Close to the Daniel dominant Closer. force in Group A. Signs off his run to finals night with a 4-2 success over Peter Jakes and a really good game that in the end. 96 averages for the pair of them in that one. Closer getting the better of Jakes who finishes fifth in the table. Mark McGinney, the only man below him. Ryan Murray ahead of him on 14 points. He is going to be in Group C with that trio. Greg Ritchie and Rob Collins take the places in Group B. But top spot goes to Daniel Closer, who wins the group with a plus 29 leg difference. The only man with a positive leg difference in the group and what's been a remarkable three days of action in Group A, of which Closer has been king. We are going to hand back to Abby and Paul upstairs to talk you through the action and preview what's coming up for the rest of the week. Yeah, thank you very much, Murph. Nico, a really, really good game to round off the Group A's action there. Jake's he not able to do what he needed to to get into Group B, but he's certainly shown that he's going to be a force to be reckoned with in Group C. I think what he needed to do was some good performances. He's had one there, even in defeat. So when he looks at his numbers, which I'm sure he will do, looks at the performances in depth, there was a lot to be admired about over the last couple of days, maybe not on Monday. Yeah, absolutely. And we can have a little look at the graphic to show you the groups that we've got coming up on Thursday and Friday. There we have it. Confirmation once more that Daniel Closer is the first player through two finals night. Nico, look at groups B and C, full of talent, full of names that you've been practicing to learn in group C there. But group B will, will focus on, first of all, um, You've got Richie going into there, Rob Collins, Robert Thornton, Ryan Palmer, and Stephen Burton returns. Stephen Burton, who dropped his dart down the smoke machine at this very venue. We can confirm he's getting that dart back as well this week. A really exciting lineup. Well, I don't think Stephen Burton's the kind of player that would go chopping and changing his equipment all the time, but I'm glad he's getting it back. But I think he's the danger person in that group. I think he's just got such a heavy level in sh short well, sparky bursts. And that's what you need to do in this format. He's someone who has had success with us previously. I think he's going to qualify, but obviously everybody's going to be looking at Martin Adams and Robert Thornton. 
and Burton, someone who's had experience on this stage as well, which you can't say for players coming in on Thursday and Friday. But Robert Thornton, you know, it's pointless even mentioning that with him, but he's so exciting. You mentioned it at the top of the show, the form he's in at the moment. We're not talking about it because of his name. We're mentioning him because of the form he's in. Can you really see him not qualifying for finals night? No. I just think the way he has gone about himself in the last 12 months, he hasn't had a tour card. He's been with us for a couple of seasons. Uh, playing in this format. He loves just playing lots of matches against lots of different players, but he ultimately gets success wherever he goes, and I expect success from him this week. And a word on Greg Ritchie as well, who we've talked about his finishing all week. There were little dips, weren't there, today, where he just wasn't able to find that same clinical edge, and, and when that's missing, sometimes his scoring lets him down as well. It does, and we've talked about the advantages of being in Group B, but there is a major disadvantage as well you can't make as many mistakes because you're playing less games. So if he does have these dips, the ups are going to have to be very up. The dips are going to have to be a lot lower. Well, n not as low, let's put it that way anyway. Absolutely. And we can look at Group C as well, which, of course, is the first group to get going at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. Look at those names there. Who are you most excited? I know we, we all know a lot about Martin Adams, but who are the players who may be lesser known in that group that you're excited about? Well, Jordan Brooks played at the Lakeside against Lee Shewan. It didn't go his way. I I'd like to learn more about Jordan's game. We know a lot about Martin Adams, obviously. We know plenty about McGinney, uh, Peter Jakes and Ryan Murray. But for me, it's about learning of uh, Yanis Mustafayevs. I want to know more about him. I want to know the way he goes for finishes. And this is the perfect atmosphere for him to learn more about his game and for us to learn about him. Absolutely. It's the same as with Closer mm. this week. You know, it's, it's so exciting for us to get to see these new players, or who are new to us anyway, in this surrounding, and get to understand their game. And it's exciting when we see you know, the same players so frequently. It's a fantastic opportunity to see this new talent coming through. This is good for him, and it's also good for Latvian darts as well, because we need some countries like that to get more exposure for more of their players. For too long, it's just been about Maras Rasba, but now we have someone who is spending a lot of time in the UK, playing a lot more players who are perceived as being better than him. He's testing himself, and this will be another test on that ladder. Most definitely. I'm excited to see him in action too, but I am not averse to seeing more of Madas Rasma and things being all about Madas Rasma. I do absolutely love him. But we will get Group C underway from 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. Make sure you come and join us. It's going to be a cracker.